This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Technology, the core team. Anyway, I'm Nate Claver, Jason Trying to cross her T's and dot her lowercase J's on uh, sure, special teams. Sure, sure. So I like that lowercase J yeah. with a dot. <laughs> Not a smiley face, just a dot. Uh, this week or this year, again, there's some transition. You, you know, you you you, you uh, had some injuries recovered from last year, and you got some new players involved, um, and and maybe some struggles trying to figure out where some people are. And one of them that I saw Friday is you got to get that, that guy, the line up front on both sides to try and, and do their jobs a little bit better. Right. We're looking kind of um, on our varsity squad is our numbers aren't where we thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, we've talked to some kids and we've been really appreciative of our kids. And some of our kids have been really selfless and said, hey, I'll do whatever's best for the team. Sure. Uh, you see Tristan Reyes is playing center. You're going to see Luke Van Brocklin playing um, some tackle tonight. And uh, it's a conversation that we go up and we ask the kids and say, uh, we were looking at you at this spot, and uh, we believe this is a position where you can not only play a significant amount, but you can also help us um, best fit the team. And so we've already had several conversations, not with this, just those two guys, but other guys as well. And the response has been, yes, coach, whatever I can do to help the team. Okay. So that's a culture piece that yeah. gets into that. Is that, yeah. you know, where does that come from? Where do you think that all of a sudden they get that mindset? You know, it's, I think it's just being able to have that relationship with kids and say, hey, um, you know, I'm coming from a good place. I'm not just doing it because of so-and-so is dad. I'm not doing this because so-and-so because I don't like you. It's, we honestly, we develop that relationship and we say, hey, I value you so much. I want to put you in a position where, number one, you're going to play. Because I think there are some kids that 
well, if I'm number three or four in position, if I can move somewhere else and play, sure. and I can play at a high level, I'll do whatever it takes. Sure, sure. Talk about some of the other uh, student athletes and kids that you've seen through that have, have come along on the offense or defense or even special teams. Uh, talk about some of those kids that you're, you've been impressed so far in preseason. You know, we've seen, we've seen some really nice stuff from some of our younger kids. Um, you know, from the younger kids' perspective, we're seeing our freshmen are starting to pick up some more stuff. Um, just a couple sophomores, you know, you got Jace Pilcher, you got Brady Dahl, you've got uh, Brody Kresser, and you've got the offensive line. Those guys are starting to put pieces together, and the JV is starting to look like um, they got, not that they didn't have their heads on straight, but sure. they're starting to look like they can run um, our offense a little bit. And the older kids, they're, they're doing whatever they can. You know, we've got Josh McGill, who's going to try to anchor our defense. Uh, Cooper Filling, who I like to call ankle pick because sure. he's a pretty solid guy tackling low. Um, you know, we, we just got those guys that are trying to find their role and embrace it in the best way possible. And to be honest, we you know, we looked at our scrimmage film and we're like, okay, maybe let's try to turn the tables a little bit and see who we can put in different spots. And we're gonna, we might see a couple different people playing a couple different positions tonight than maybe the week after and the sure. week after. Sure. We're, we're going to do whatever it takes to get this ship sailing in the right direction. So look at special teams, and that's your boat that you're, uh, yes. you're steering. Uh, talk about your punter. Talk about your place kicker. Uh, and who's, who's going back to receive? Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a wide range of things we're trying to do with our special teams. Um, you might see, you know, Derek has been, Derek Weisenkamp has been our punter for a while. You might see Derek back there. You might see Fisher back there. Um, our wide, our return guys, you might Is see. Is there different situations you look at of where, where that might be? As a staff, we've talked about kind of different things and maybe different looks to give people. Um, but you got to come to the game and find sure. out. Sure, yeah. Seven o'clock kickoff, yeah. by the way. Um, but we've got, um, you know, we've got Brady Gaul. Brady Dahl returning punts. We got Derek Weisenkamp returning punts, and then uh, for and we got some other people as well, just trying to give them opportunities to get the ball in their hands. You know, being a, I always try to look how can we get a playmaker a ball. So like sometimes we look at hey, I have Ke- Keaton Roscoe is in the backfield a little bit for the kickoff return. How can we? How many touches can we get him to try to make him sure. as successful as possible? So you got over broccoli and kicking that ball. Yeah, you had him last week anyway. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and, and that's another thing. And, this whole week we've talked to kids about what you have a platform you have a platform how are you going to best use your platform and with that um Oberchok has an awesome platform this week to see if he can continue to kick like he has been and if not if he doesn't perform on the platform maybe we have to give someone else a chance. sure sure so let's talk about hudson hudson uh runner up last year yep uh, in the uni dome they i think they've lost a little bit but they've got a good staff yeah. and, and there's a good base to probably work from what have you seen from them? What have you heard? You know, Brecky has been a coach at Hudson for, he's been a phenomenal coach for Hudson for the past couple of years. Um, you know, you could say Hudson's one of those teams that they say they uh, they don't rebuild, they reload. They've sure. been, ever since Brecky's been there, they have been a very solid contender year in and year out. Um, I know, I think they've got some younger guys up front. They may even have a freshman in there somewhere playing in their defense. And um, they've got a really solid running back. They've got their quarterback back. And, um, so we'll see. We'll see what they got tonight. It's very respectable. Um, you could say, you know, we've got a lot of some of our guys back from last year too. So uh, we'll see what happens when we collide in the field tonight. So there's a mentality coming in tonight. You know, compared to last Friday, sunny skies, dry conditions. Uh, ahead of it, you've got uh, the thought of what's happening tonight, and yeah. if and the fans are thinking, do I come out? Do I get wet? Yeah. What's going to happen? They remember maybe last year's two-hour delay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're from a player standpoint. What do you got to keep reminding them? What do you got? What mindset do you got to yeah. paint? You're going to play no matter what. And strap them on. Right. And I guess one thing we've been preaching for the past couple of weeks is how there's you're no gonna, cancellation. Right. How, how how are you going to respond to adversity? And I've got a couple of questions today about hey, are we are we going to play tonight? And it's like well, the weather app I'm looking at just says rain, but some of the other some of the other schools around us have already moved moved the kickoff um, kickoff of the game up. Sure. Um, so this big thing being able to tell the kids is, hey, this isn't to be your thing of adversity. How are you going to respond to that? Um, so just being able to prepare. Good thing we got seven inches of rain the past couple of weeks. So um, we practice. We're used to it. Yeah, we practiced outside in the rain, and um, I think after we get a little bit wet during our warmups, we should kind of be right back at home. All right, coach. Appreciate you uh, with our pregame uh, interview. Uh, seven o'clock kickoff. You're watching that. It's moments away. Come on up. Uh, we invite you to come in and see the game, and, and gra- might as well grab something to eat while you while you come up here. Uh, otherwise, it's right here on the Jayhawk Sports Network. Coach, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Coach Tim Sauer in the Heartland Technology pregame.
So we got a chance to hear from uh, head coach uh, Tim Sauer, first year head coach uh, for Jessup High School football. And, uh, you know, exciting year as, he, as he's doing some things differently when it comes to culture, when it comes to practices. Yeah. Uh, but things won't necessarily evolve overnight. Uh, you know, our numbers, as you said, are okay. He was hoping to be a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, your first year coach, you got to try and set that foundation. Set that foundation, and he's a guy who, like, if you listen to him or if you heard him talk before, he's a very positive guy. Um, he feeds off energy. I think the kids feed off that. Uh, the student, not only the uh, kids that he's teaching, um, all the kids that he's around him, he builds up an energy with them, and I think he, they really enjoy playing for him. So here momentarily we will uh, have, uh, we've got as many students that can brave to be out there tonight. Uh, but our football team will be entering from that uh, southeast uh, part of uh, of our. Do, do you call this a stadium? Do you call it a field? I you know, I always go back and forth in field. that. Field. And if you listen to that little interview that he just did, um, how you gonna, you know, adversity? I listened to the interview this morning on the radio. I think it was East Waterloo's coach, and that's what exactly what he was saying. How the team's gonna respond? Uh, you get down a touchdown. You get down two touchdowns. Are you gonna pout? Or are you gonna fight back? And I think that's what Coach Sauer's message is. Is what he's looking for these next these first two games. Not to say they don't mean anything. They're non-district games, so they're kind of like a preseason game. So sure. they kind of help you get ready for the regular season, sort of. Yeah, you get the the runner-up last year in 1A with Hudson tonight. Then you have to go up a class to play O-Line next week. So that's yeah. a little bit different, too. That's a little bit different because they've got a tough schedule, too. I think O-Line plays a rival game tonight. They play o Independence. They haven't played them for a few years. I know O-Line's got Wacan in their district. Hudson's got a tough district, too. They've got Wapsie Valley. Uh, they've got East Buchanan, so those are going to be two tough games. So I think they're looking at trying to get a little bit better tonight and see what they have for the uh, district run for them. So here momentarily, uh, the team will become running out. But uh, Jessup, coached by Tim Sauer, assisted by Steve Schmidt, Ron Sadler. Steve's got the offense. Ron Sadler's got the defense. And then you've got Aaron Schutte involved along with J B Jacob McMartin, Donnie Washendorf, Ben Stevens, Paul McCone, Jim Matson, and uh, Rodney Selesky helping out a little bit as well. And on the other side of the ball, uh, the Hudson Pirates, uh, you heard say Coach uh, Justin Brecky uh, had been around this program uh, in Hudson for a number of years and it obviously has seen a lot of success. Uh, assisted by Keith Harms, who was a uh, former assistant uh, at UNI, uh, Zane Siddick, Joe ba Bonson, uh, Mark Schmadke, uh, Jake Austin, Dylan Hosman, all involved in that. And uh, Superintendent Nathan Marting was up in our press box tonight as he's stepping in for Joe Smines, who was lucky enough to have his sister schedule her wedding for this weekend <laughs> oh so he avoids the weather gets to have some yeah yeah so yeah his profession of being an ad and his father's as well as an athletic director so i think maybe it was the daughter's turn of saying uh i'm done with fridays on your schedule Such you're on mine yes exactly. in, in the fall in so the fall. so uh, nathan marting said we've also uh, at this point we've We've won the cheerleading battle as we have two more cheerleaders than they do, and we already have 16. So nice. uh, quite a few numbers uh, for that as, as they step out here. Again, weather tonight is going to be in the upper 60s with a chance of rain. We're looking about 8, 8.30 somewhere. 30 to 40% chance is what we're hearing on the forecast. And we're expecting a sunset of about 7.54. But that won't probably matter as much of an issue as it did a week ago with our scrimmage as it's pretty hazy right now, Jason, as you look out there. Yeah, there's a lot of fog out there. It, I mean, you still can see the field, but it's kind of low, you have to have your windshield wipers on a little bit because it's starting to, you know, on your windshield. I think uh, Nathan said when he walked up here, his glasses got a little water and he had to wipe them off. So it's just kind of that annoyance rain right now. So as we see our uh, Jessup Jayhawks making their way out and stretching across that south end zone line, and Hudson is across that end zone line to the north, and momentarily, we'll get a chance to hear the playing of our national anthem uh, from our Jessup marching band. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technology. Jayhawk football against Hudson. Kickoff set here for about 7 o'clock as uh, that is coming up very shortly in about seven minutes on our score clock. By supporting your team, respecting the abilities of the opposition and the decisions of the officials, you can create an environment that is reflective of the community. Be a class act. Be a good sport. Be a winner in the game of sportsmanship. 
Please welcome tonight's game officials, John Morgan, Joe Murphy, Dylan Pond, Mike Pond, and Kyle Keckley. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as our high school marching band honors our nation's and flag while paying respect to our men and women in uniform around the world who protect our liberties and way of life with the play of our national anthem. the playing of our national anthem by our Jessup marching band that uh, continues to grow in numbers through the last few years, Jason. They've got, it looks like maybe one or two kids more than they had last year, so hopefully we keep seeing those numbers go up like we saw cheerleading and everything else. So their uh, squad going to set to run here from that south end zone and crash through that uh, paper American flag. I, I assume that's an okay representation of patriotism. I, I think so, for right now anyway. <laughs> hopefully it, still. This is the Heartland Technology pregame show as we'll wrap up here very shortly and have kickoff just moments away here in Jessup, but Jayhawks set to roll here very shortly. Heartland Technology uh, is, uh, I guess, uh, our big partner in this broadcast here in Jessup. And again, we, we talk about this throughout the season and we talk about it throughout, the, you know, we see what they do throughout the year. Uh, now there's a data center that's coming online very shortly. shortly if it's yeah. not already online yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the East Industrial Park here in Jessup, high-speed internet, uh, fiber to the house, and we're talking not just in Jessup locally, but I live four miles out and I've got it to my house and digital cable and you know, it's it's just an awesome experience to be able to have something like that in a in a smaller community like Jessup. Exactly, and I talked to a few people there, and I think here in a, here soon they're going to start trying to add more products. I think you know they haven't really introduced, but I think they're going to keep evolving, keep changing, keep adding more stuff to keep more stuff local for people. Yeah. So the, the you look at uh, also at, you know if you're U.S. cellular, you know if you have challenges oh, with exactly. U.S. cellular or want to switch over or look at uh, new phone or accessories, uh, stop in a visit with uh, Heartland Technology. Right in downtown Jessup. Coin flip happening right now as you look out uh, the team captains. And this was a process, too. And we'll talk to Coach uh, Sauer about this uh, probably on our upcoming week on our Jayhawks on the Move in our coaches show. And this was something it wasn't just just because you're a senior or just because you get to be a team captain. Logan Cole, uh, a senior. Josh McGill, a senior. And Fisher Ord, a junior. They had to they had to kind of work to to get that position. I believe, yeah, they have an interview process. I think Coach Sauer runs them through. I think that's something they've done the last few years. Uh, it's just like you said, just because you're a senior doesn't give you that right. Um, so they make it, you know, work for it and make sure those kids know what it means to be a captain. So as they continue through the coin flip, and if you didn't catch the officials for tonight's game, John Morgan, Joel Murphy, Dylan Pond, Mike Pond. And Kyle Telecki. And I know this This is one of those crews that I noticed, started noticing this last year that uh, they've got their own uh, walkie-talkie communication in their headsets in their ears. So, yeah. so that can make some things a little bit efficient. I looked on the uh, where they're from. They're all from the same area, so they all must be part of the same crew. And usually those guys try to all work together, so they stay together, and they know which the other guys call out. And it looks like they're getting together to do a high five right in the middle, a little, <laughs> little break it down. <laughs> Yeah, when, if they bend their knees, uh, 
I yeah. think it, it might be a good night or, or might be a bad night. I'm not yeah. quite sure which, which avenue that's going to go down. The nice thing with these guys is the football referees, they're not so much of the crowd. They don't have to hear all the heckles from all the people in the crowd. But it's, it's not without saying. They've probably heard that before. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah. in high school football, but uh, yeah. definitely shouldn't happen here in Jessup tonight. No. Coming up the quarters, we're going to be able to uh, uh, hopefully uh, get some stats. We've got our, uh, some of the, the staff or assistants uh, at the lower levels in the youth programs, and some of the parents help out with some stats. So Brian Van Brocklin kind of spearheads that down there. Um, uh, so we'll have that coming up here, hopefully at the quarters, to kind of get some real numbers. Uh, this is kind of that first game that, you know, we regularly can pull up Quick Stats Iowa. If you're not familiar with that, check out Quick Stats Iowa. You can pull up stats for all sorts of sports from boys and girls, uh, but it's nice to be able to reference that as we go through so we know who some leading tacklers are and, and uh, passing yards and, and receiving yards and rushing yards and things like that. So uh, the first game's always a little challenging as there's not really anything in the record book no. other than what we saw so from, from last, last year. year. Exactly. It looks like we gotta, we're taking the ball. We're taking the kickoff, and Cooper Feeling's back deep with Joe Giratano, and maybe it looks like... I'm not quite sure if that's Keaton Roscovius back there or not. He's been getting some play on that yeah, and the gonna, kickoff. Going to go right to Cooper. From Hudson. Going to take about the 15. And he's going to scoot outside right in front of the chains, finds an opening. He'll go down about the 30-yard line. Nice little return there by Cooper. And we will see the Jessup offense come out for the first time this season, formerly as the season starts. And you see Logan Cole. You see maybe that's why he had become a captain as he's trying to Get some excitement with his team and, and also on the sideline. And, you know, something's going to be different here this this year. Jason, our chief energy officer, who was Coach Sauer, now has to coach. He can't come out in that lane four of the track and try no, to get the crowd going. crowd going, yeah. I remember it was a few years ago, actually, at Hudson, where he was getting the crowd pumped up uh, for that same reason right there. So he, he won't be able to do that anymore. So Fisher Ort in the backfield, ready for that snap, quick to the right side. He will find Josh McGill and not be able to uh, make any progress Looks as like he gets, uh, gets yeah, stopped. Stopped right there. It looks like behind the line we took about a five-yard loss on that uh, pass behind the line of scrimmage. Spot that on the 26-yard line, second and 14. Hudson's got some size up front in that defense. You got Joe Giratano to the left of uh, Fisher right there going all the – makes the pass right there. Gain the Cooper right there. Quick cover on Cooper fueling and still shy of that original. Man, well, they're going to get right there at that first line of scrimmage. Gain the loss back, so we're right at the line of scrimmage, so it brings about third and ten. So they will be on that middle of the field. Shotgun snap. Hudson. Quick on the rush, good coverage on that line, oh. and can't quite get to it. Intended for Josh McGill. Had him wide open right there. Line's doing a good job right now, giving him uh, time to throw the ball. So hopefully that all night long we get some more shots of that because that was a – we had there we had a first down. I think we could have made that first down. But the line did a good job there. They held Fisher had enough time. He had a good five, six seconds. And if you can get five, six seconds in a high school game or any football game, it's usually going to be a lot of positives. Fisher Orts. In that backfield, it is fourth and ten, and we're gonna go for it. They're gonna go for little it. No quick kick. Yeah, little look, and then he kicked it. Takes a nice little bounce to number seven there. And stop and go on the action, but there's some Jayhawks right there. Ethan Fulcher on the return, the junior for Hudson. He will get stopped up. They'll move the chains, and they will mark that about the 45-yard line of the Pirates. First and ten. Nice little uh, play. Then he faked the, uh, did put Hudson on their back of their heels, try to see him do a little quick punt right there, see what happens. Now it's a game of uh, field position. They're right at the 45, so it's, we can hold them because they're almost right there in four down territory. Some big boys on that line. There is. I'm looking at their sizes on there, and I, don't, I, don't, I think they kind of underestimated their size. Jacob Murray at quarterback. In motion, Christian Saris. A little off counter right there, coming right there. We Just out. cracking that scrimmage, but it's going to get a couple yards got in that game. a couple game. yards. We got him right at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to fall forward. A little counter play by Hudson. Looks like Cooper feeling on that tackle. Number 24 and number four, uh, sophomore Brady Dahl. 
making the start on the defense on that outside linebacker. 10-20 to go, first quarter, opening game. Hudson, a non-district game here in Jessup tonight. Hopefully the rain will hold off. Motion Coach Folker right in motion. Side. And try and snag him, but he's going to get the first down and then and some. some. We had him back behind the line of scrimmage. Look, I can't tell what the number was. We just kind of got through the numbers. 54, I think that's Brendan Siebert. Had him back behind the line, just couldn't get him wrapped up. They'll move the chains, first and 10. We are in Jessup territory. That's about the 41, 42 yard line. For a team that's done a lot of passing the past season. Well, they had a running back that almost had 2,000 yards last year, too. So, But he graduated. It looked like they're trying to pound the ball right now. Quick snap and a quick pass. Fake handoff, and we're downfield and on the run, yeah. but they'll take him down about the 10. Pass caught by Trey Yochumson, you got right I believe. Be yep, he got behind Cooper and uh, Brady, and quarterback was able to make the pass, and he's they're almost, well, they're first and in goal inside the 10. So like you said, Brady Dahl in on the stop, and it's those quick plays. Yeah. They're just quick off that, quick yeah. off that snap. snap. First and 10 on the nine, under 10 minutes to play first quarter. Get into motion, and a quick Wheel shot right. out to the right, makes the cut in, and he will get in, in the end zone. We're getting penetration. We just can't get the, uh, wrapped up and get make that point of contact and make that tackle. I think pretty much every single play they've made a big gains. We've been back there. We just can't seem to get right at the point of attack and get the uh, tackle. So Ethan Fulcher in for that nine-yard carry. Hudson blocked with an attempted extra kick. It's blocked, blocked. and I believe... We got, well. Whites and Camp will jump on that ball. Oh, yep, so there's a positive play. Go off there. Our uh, offense looked pretty good. We've got to pick up a first down and keep the momentum off that play. So 9.51 to go in the first quarter. Hudson on the board quickly. Uh, what, four or five plays, if that? I believe, yeah, less, probably less than five to six plays, not even that. They probably average about eight yards. Yeah, about a 55-yard a uh, series or, or, or run to take that ball from their own territory into that north end zone here at Jessup. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technology. I'm Nate Kleber, Jason Pilcher. We are in the press box and uh, Jessup tonight, Lori Ann Sabre's press box as we have a bird's eye view straight down that 48-yard line in Jessup territory and uh, We'll see what uh, Jessup can respond with here on another kickoff. Well, and that's what Coach Sauer was talking about, adversity, how you respond. They had a quick score. Let's see if we can come back, put a drive together, and put maybe hope put some points on the board. Cooper Fueling, Keaton Roscobius in the backfield. And I think that's Joe Giratano. Yep, Giratano, uh, yeah. Jr. And we will have Austin Appleton. Kicking things off, kicks off from that 40-yard line. Off of Joe, bounce, just jump on it, there you go. Line drive kick went off right Joe's uh, shoulder pads, and he did the right thing about just jumping right on top of that. And we'll start Jessup's second first and 10, and look to get into Hudson territory as they'll spot that at the 21-yard line. First and 10, first quarter. Hudson bringing quite a following tonight. Jessup stands, filling up. I'm sure some are wondering, is it gonna rain or not, or do you sit and watch us? Joe's got a little nice game there off the right side. Got about four yards in the carry off tackle, right off the right tackle. Positive play. This may be a non-district game, but Hudson's in our conference. Sure. So, and we've played them for years in different sports, so it's a pretty familiar foe for Jessup and Hudson to be playing in a, a game together. Yeah, they're they're both very familiar. Yeah. You know, some of these names you recognize from basketball. Exactly. Fisher's got time. He had plenty of time, and he's getting hoofed down by one of the linemen, and he'll go out of bounds about the 33. Picked up a 
Took a little pop there at the end. Caleb Coling, the senior. Got the first down. Number 76. He can move a little bit for as big as he is. As big as he is. Fisher has some time. Hopefully that means the wide receivers can break free on the defensive side, or from the defensive backs and we get some plays down the field. He kept his head up, tried to look for that pass. Pass wasn't there. He turned the right corner and got positive yards, got a first down. Yeah, he's listed 6'1", 289. Yeah, I remember seeing him last year. I think he played JV last year. There's a hole, but a quick stop right at that 33. That 76 is in there again, that Caleb. Giratano took the shoulder pad right to the chest. Yeah. Got right back to the line of scrimmage. So it brings up second and 10. We, well, it looks like they even gave us about a foot. Yeah, it gave us a, a little inside that 10-yard <laughs> mark. Yeah. Looks like the same guys last week running the chain gain as, as uh, doing it this week. They must pull duty for all the season. Pesh almost, almost intercepted. Almost right. Peyton Stewart had his eyes on it for Hudson. Too low. Too low right there. Fisher locked in on it looked like uh, Isaac Kruger, and the defensive back kept it right there and made the play on the ball. Lucky that it wasn't going back for a pick six. I did see Kevin McCombs, who had been on that chain gang for a number of years, saw him in the concession stand after our scrimmage, and he just said, it's time for somebody else. <laughs> Now, if Buck ever retires from anything, well, this school, I mean, I said it last year, this school booster club owes him a great, great uh, added gratitude for everything he's done. And there's Ord on the run again. He has to dive in just past the line of a scrimmage, but we're looking at fourth down at about six or six, seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. About the same spot we were last time. It looks like we're lined up in the same position. Maybe we'll do that quick kick again or maybe – Try to throw him off guard. Whites and Camp usually punts is split out that far side. A little and rugby a little style side kick. rugby kick. Yeah, going to go up. Spotted about the 32-yard line. Fair catch as Hudson will have Ethan Fulcher, who is the lone one with a touchdown to his name tonight for Hudson. He will catch that, and that's where Hudson will get the ball again. Got the ball about a little past where they did last time. Hopefully our defense... Uh, can settle in and make some plays and get him behind the line of scrimmage. You know, you start looking at, uh, you know, he kicked that, I don't know, 30, 40 yards. You know, Weitzenkamp can kick that one pretty deep. Yeah. You know, we'll be interested to see how he's playing. He talked about that in our pregame show, looking at that special team is just, you know, trying some different things out and see how they can work. Off counter again, coming right at the middle off the left tackle. Getting past the 40-yard line. Just crawls that way. They'll mark it on that left hash on the near side. Picked up, yeah, about second and five. Hudson all-white unis tonight with the dark helmets. Got to get some penetration right back uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Hudson will split far side. Isaac Rodriguez. He's cutting back in, but they're going to go downfield. And oh, ball's Fisher. gonna get stripped right out as he was trying to catch it. Trey Yokumson. Cooper caught up with kid had a step on Cooper. Cooper turned it on. There's a kid if uh, if you want to see what the Jack does, Cooper Feeling's a kid that you should go back and look for the last past year. That kid has put on size and a lot of speed from the track season. But then right there you showed it right there from his track, how he turned on the Jets right there and caught up and broke up the pass. They'll bring Peyton Stewart. Well, there's the chief energy side. officer right there. Coach Sauer trying oh, to get the crowd up right it there. from the sideline. Side Roll out. Murray going downfield and tiptoe out of bounds. Oh. Isaac Rodriguez will get the first down just shy of that 50-yard line. We got some penetration back there, but the quarterback was able to make the pass on the run. That was a pretty good pass. And the uh, kid did the, got his foot in bounds. It was a good play. 7.24 to go. First quarter. Here in Jessup tonight, Jayhawks. And Hudson, both 1A teams next week up to Owine. Face yep. a 2A team. 2A school. They're going to run it this time, and just some power right there with Hudson and Christian Serres. They're long and they're right behind their big guys, and time their running backs get in contact. He's right to the, line, he's to the linebackers, so our linemen have got to get off those blocks somehow and get some penetration so he doesn't get any speed and get to that secondary level. So last year, Suarez had uh, 1,947 yards on 289 carries, 29 touchdowns a year ago. Yeah, that 
last year they put up some offensive numbers. So this team coming in, if you hadn't realized why they were so good last year, it's because they were able to run and throw the ball. And they'll uh, get caught short behind that line of scrimmage, which is a positive for Jessup at this point. Looks like McGill got right at the point of contact and made the tackle right as he caught the ball. So it brings up third and four. Thank you, everybody, following along in the Jessup uh, Jayhawk Sports Network on Facebook Live. Also on Jessup Local Cable Channel number one. I like it when people chime in, let us know where they're watching from and who they're watching. Some guy was from Argentina, you said yeah, earlier. Yeah, Argentina. Argentina, look at that, South America. It looked like maybe a former exchange student. Yep. Right there again, that's the point that I was talking about. One, two, three, four, five. Jessup Jayhawks it took to get him down. And he, we had him, we made some contact behind the line of scrimmage. We just can't seem to wrap him up and get that his momentum stopped behind there, and he drug five or six guys with him. Well, you look at last year, he had yeah, total offensive numbers. He had, nine, he had 90 receiving yards on seven catches, so a total of 2,037 yards and 30 touchdowns a year ago for, wow. for this Hudson uh, offensive player, and he just keeps moving. Christian Sayers, a senior. You look at him, senior, 5'10", 186. Like I said earlier, I think these kids, I'm looking at their uh, quick stats, and they seem a little bigger than their quick stats. Usually the kids boost them up, but they look like they uh, downplayed their size. 5'44 to go first quarter. Hudson, the only team to score. Quick handoff, going to roll right, right side. side. Fulcher uh, gets by one corner. tackler, gets by Weitzenkamp, dances down the line, and it's another Hudson touchdown. 13-yard McGill had there. some contact back on behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, looked like Josh McGill and uh, Logan Cole were back there. We just couldn't get the wrapped up, get a tackle. See how they set up for their opportunity for a two-point conversion or an extra point. And it looks like they're going to go for two. Try to make up for the extra point they lost. Two to the far side, one to the near. Put one in motion. Ball. And the ball is loose, and Jessup will land on it and disrupt that point after opportunity again. So with 5.36 to go, First quarter, Hudson scores again, same back, 13 yards this time as uh, Ethan Fulcher uh, comes in there, or Fulker, uh, 181. He's a junior, 5'10", and just looking last year that uh, Fulcher, Ethan Fulcher, uh, had an older brother, I'm guessing Cameron Fulcher graduated last year, but, but uh, Ethan Fulcher still had 32 carries, 261 yards last year. Um, and included two touchdowns. His longest was 20 yards. Yeah, he's taken up where his brother left off last year. Uh, football's an easy game. It's blocking, tackling, and right now our tackling is not up to standard right now. We've got to get that uh, changed, uh, and that's something that the kids are just going to have to make that adjustment to themselves on the field and try to get a little bit tougher up front. Jessup returns to their kick return squad. Joe Giratano out there, and we'll also see... Keaton Roscovius. Keaton and Keaton Roscovius and then Cooper's back deep. Looks like they got Eric Sweeney in the middle. So if a short kick comes more in the middle, Eric Sweeney will have that. And set to kick off, Austin Appleton. As Joe Cullum makes his way onto the field for special teams for the Pirates. Kick from the 40, low, little bouncer, Geritano, out of, in and out of his fingertips, tucks it away, gets by the 30, finds some holes, swaps out at about the 36. Made up for right there, bobble the uh, kickoff return, but is able to get about a 15-yard return on it. 5.31 to go, first quarter. Coach Sauer, Chief Energy Officer, see him right there at the 40-yard line talking to Whites and Cap, as well as, as Keaton Roscovius. Always coaching, always teaching. 
He'll step back, see what he's Fisher's looking at defensive-wise. Makes the throw on the run. There we nice, go. nice little play. play on the run. Looks like the Josh McGill. Or Isaac, yeah, Josh McGill, number 25. Yeah, one of the team captains gets that nine-yard pass play. Fisher did a nice job rolling out to the left, setting his feet, and made a nice throw to Josh McGill. Makes it second in about a one-yard to a first down. Approaching the five-minute mark in the first quarter. A little handoff, ducks through, oh, ball. ball is loose. Hudson, I think, has it. They do. Yeah, uh, Joe made a nice little play, got past, uh, got the first down, and it looked like he was shifting gears a little bit, and the ball got popped out. So close. We were two yards past that first down, and ball gets loose. It's... It's, you got to take care of the little things. That's that's the hard thing. That's exactly it. You know, football, you can do all the different plays and the schemes, but it comes down to blocking, tackling, and turnovers. Those three things, that's the team that does that the best. Regardless of the players you have, you usually can come up on top. Back to offense. Hudson under the five-minute mark at the 48-yard line, first and 10, and a quick pass yeah, play quick pass. is going to be 52-yard run to the same jersey number seven. Quick little fake, uh, they fake the to the uh, running back. We looks like we bid on that play and made a nice little throw over top and it'll beat a couple of other guys right for it walks into the end zone. So they'll hustle down there and they're going to try just for the extra. As place kicker Austin Appleton. We'll see the snap come in low. Jessup hustles in past that line of Wide scrimmage. Left, it looks like. Oh. Nope, they're going to say it's good. It's good. It's good. good. I guess so. They had a better angle than me. So 19 to nothing all of a sudden here in Jessup through the first quarter. <coughs> Offensively, we're, we've made some plays. We just can't finish. Uh, defensively, we need to turn it up a notch, get a little bit more intense, and get some pressure back there and realize what we're doing. We're kind of looks a little lost on the defensive side right now. Uh, we've been on a few plays that probably on the play action pass. So hopefully the boys can make some adjustments, get themselves tuned up and come back here and let's get a drive going. So we'll make their way out to the 50 yard line. Coach Sauer, head coach and in charge of the special teams. Yeah. You see that a lot, even in college and in pros. You see where the head coach, he has a, a hand in everything, and special special teams. You know, people think just kick off, kick off, return, punt, punt, return, but they're actually major parts of a football team in a football game. It can be a difference maker. Kick off again for Hudson. Third time, actually fourth time we've seen this. Hudson had the opening kickoff with Jessup receiving, and then we've seen three touchdowns. All number seven going in there, approaching his Al Bundy mark. <laughs> My line from last year, that, that there was a deep kickoff right there to Cooper. He caught it about the nine yard line. And he'll duck past number tw uh, that 21 yard line before he gets forced down. They'll move the chains down to that area to the north side and see what the Jessup offense can do here. But again, you got to hang on to that ball. You got to hang on to the ball. Like, you know, it comes down to, you know, usually three keys block, tackle, and turnovers. And right now, uh, we're losing, you know, we lost the turnover battle. We're down 1 0 on turnovers. They turned around on the right in the first play and put a score on the board. So we need to hopefully get a long drive and eat up some clock and put some points on the board. Fisher or at quarterback, Joe Giratano in that backfield. Too tight to the near side. Screen pass. Dylan Brown got some get, get out in front. And keeps moving. Has that ball out loose a little bit as he gets taken yeah. back a little bit. But they will give him that forward motion about a six-yard gain. Nice little play. Hudson actually did a really good job of getting back. They uh, got farther back there. Fisher sucked him in and made a little dump pass to Dylan Brown. Uh, but Hudson, they're a pretty fast team, too. And they got back and... Lucky for them, it was only a five, six-yard gain. Just about four minutes to go in the first quarter. You see the score there with Hudson in the advantage. 
Fisher Ort going to take a turn around the outside. Finds Jessup's first down and out of bounds. Play right there had a passing lane. Uh, the passing lane wasn't there. Uh, looked at her, got to the first down, got to the sideline, and moved the chains. So that's big for Jessup. That's a positive. That's a positive. Keep building on those. Our offense, we've we've moved the ball well. We just kind of stalled. Uh, he's getting plenty of time, so we're getting some passing lanes and some running lane. So hopefully we can put some points on the board. First and ten on the thirty-two. Looks like Hudson's bringing a blitz. Hopefully Fisher can back it off. But we now, I think our right tackle, our right guard kind of flinched a little bit coming up on there. I think that's our first flag tonight. I, did. I was going to jinx us. I said both sides. They usually, <laughs> first game, you usually see a couple more flags on both sides because everybody's kind of out of you know whack a little bit. But I, I'm sure Hudson probably had a scrimmage against somebody last week too to get the butterflies out, kinks out of the uh, system. I, w I told Coach Sauer this week, I was not impressed with him switching jersey numbers. It's, it made us a little more complicated, it but uh, he said we were uh, professionals. We should handle it, basically <laughs> is what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. But they were impressed with your investigative work of Looking judging. The kids, how, judging how they were walking. Yeah, yeah. The option play to Joe. Flipped it off to Joe. Get, just can't quite get the sideline. Keeps rolling. Hits at 30. Brings up second in about 15. Yeah, second about 15 to go. About that three-minute mark here in Jessup tonight. I'm Nate Clayberg. That's Jason Pilcher here on the Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technology. And here are the cheerleaders in the background. 16 strong across JV and varsity tonight. This season, they had five like uh, three years ago, if that. Yeah, like... Uh, Coach Mines, the AD, Joe, has made a point about 15 strong, so maybe we should, maybe they should have made it 15 strong about maybe. the 15 programs. Maybe we're... Uh, oh, hashtag 15 strong. Something like that. That's, maybe uh, Mrs. Uh, Nolan can do that hashtag 16 strong for the cheerleading squad. Well, then I was trying to push, you know, do we fit into that? Is that from <laughs> the Jayhawk Sports Network? Are we 17 strong? We're not on the budget yet. Maybe next maybe year. Not. Yeah. Maybe not. Fisher's got time to make the throw. He had a wide open. somebody out of the reach, out of the reach of the hands. Of Logan Cole. Logan Cole had beat the uh, secondary and had a uh, shot to the end zone. We just kind of overshot him. That's the second time tonight, Logan, so far in the first quarter, uh, Logan Cole's had a step on a kid. Just haven't quite completed it yet. 2-11 to go. They'll set up fourth down and long and trying something a little bit different again, keeping that uh, shotgun formation, keep that rugby style. And there's the block, and he'll boot it. It's a good punt. It's going to take a bounce. It's going to keep rolling and watch it step at about the 30 and the 28 yard line as, as Cooper Feeling will get his hands on it. He's doing average, probably a good 30 yards of punt. So, as far as for rugby going off that quick kick, doing pretty good. Might be a future there. Um, maybe a future right there. Maybe uh, a little club rugby. Yeah. Coach Sowers found something to try a little bit different than the first game. We didn't see that in the scrimmage last week against um, Columbus, so this is something new. Columbus Catholic, as we're told. Columbus Catholic, as I was told last, or yes, not Waterloo Columbus, but I've been told by a handful of people it's uh, Columbus Catholic. Not Waterloo Columbus, Columbus Catholic. Yeah. So. We'll make that change. We'll make sure for this year for basketball. Right, right. Going deep and just loose. No just, flags. Oh, he's pulling his flag out right now. Nope. Nope. He's grabbing the eye. Thought, thought about it. He thought about it. He actually was reaching in his pocket right there. And I was like, I hope they don't review the tape because the state looks at that. I was like, well, why were you reaching in your pocket? Because you look like you're going to throw the flag. And I think that's what the Hudson, Hudson coach right now is saying. He's just pulling up his pants. <laughs> that's all he yeah, was doing. Exactly. He was running, but he's got some, I don't know, maybe he was looking for something. He's putting something in his pocket. Maybe that's what it was. But it looked like he was pulling his flag, but then he decided not to. Dropped his Skittles. Drop, yeah. A little snack out there. Yeah. Quick maybe, energy. Maybe a junior mint. Yeah. Snap. They're going to try and there go up the middle there. a bit, but trying to get that there. ball loose. Exactly. Look at that. That's got it right there. Got some weight. Cole Finley. Yeah. Got, that's where we need to do. You need to get him stopped right behind the line of scrimmage so he doesn't get the speed when he gets to the linebackers, get to that secondary level that we can stop him behind the line of scrimmage. Brings up third and long, uh, passing down. So hopefully we can hopefully maybe try to force their first punt of the night. 
Cole Finley right up front. Yeah, he's a big Six junior. 6'1", 223. Yeah, he's a big junior. He's, you know, he only started playing football, I think, the last couple of years. So he's done a really good job. Crowd getting into it. Third down and nine. Drop back to pass. Jacob Murray on the run, and he's going to get short. stopped short right there. Josh McGill. Yeah. Did a good job. The defensive backs uh, stayed with their men. The defensive line didn't over pursue. And hopefully, we'll see what they bring up. If they bring up the first punt, we'll see what they're going to do. Cole Finley has saved this series for Jessup. Yeah, he's turning it up right there. Last two, three plays. Joe Smines checking in from the uh, wedding rehearsal. Yeah, the rehearsal dinner. Getting ready to make Appreciate his toast. Appreciate that, Joe. Making ready for his toast tomorrow. Taking notes. First punt. That one going to kick from the 20 to about the 25 is where it's going to stop. Nice punt. But you got to give credit to Jessup and their defense right there. Turn it up right there. Uh, held the first stop. 29 seconds left. We're in some clock here, see if we can get some positive plays and turn around and hopefully score. Just looking through here, and you've, you've got, you know, there's there's going to be some technical skills that they keep needing to evolve and some mindsets and some learning, uh, especially you said there's some, maybe some inexperienced big guys. Exactly. They're, you know, we're not a senior-laden team, uh, so a lot of the key positions from these kids, uh, they're still learning, and a lot of them, you know, played JV last year, and so it's going to be a process. But I think it's a positive that they keep playing and keep being positive and keep their heads up. Oh, it, turnover right there. Fisher just turned, popped it right off. Trying to do a little too much right there and coughed it up right to number 18. So Hudson will have the ball in their own territory. Got to secure that ball. Inside that 10. One thing, if you're at home or you're teaching your son or whatever, you always hear about the five points of contact when you're holding the football. And Fisher got the ball a little extended out there. Popped right off to uh, number 18, and he got – they're inside the five. Yeah, they're right on the five. On that right hashtag, 19 seconds to go first quarter before he flips sides. Two turnovers have been costly for Jessup. Murray drops back 10 Screen. yards. Quick pass in the dirt. Knocked it down. Cole Finley Cole again Finley right again there. Cole Finley again put his big paw up there, got his right hand on there, knocked the pass down. Looked like Hudson was going for a little screen play, and Cole Finley was able to knock it down and bring it up second and goal. This would be impressive for Jessup if they can prevent this. But I anticipate a little, little short pass to number seven. He goes into motion. Change that around. They're gonna they're gonna run it and find an easy way in. Hudson with Christian Saris. Five yard carry. Right up the middle, right off the uh, A gap, went right in there and scored the touchdown. About eleven seconds left in the quarter. They will again have Appleton come in and. Shoot for that extra point. Able to get it last time. Whistle blown. Looking no. to see. Maybe they weren't set. Yeah, they weren't set. Legal motion. Legal really motion on the offense. Offense, yeah. Don't think they were quite set when they went to snap the ball. I'll move that ball back here with 11 seconds to go. In the first quarter, Hudson's first attempt at their extra point here earlier in the game was blocked. And then they dropped their second extra point attempt. And a straight on kick is right to the middle. That will be good. And you make it all of a sudden 26 to nothing in favor of Hudson. And, uh, Jason, you, you got to think back. You know, Hud, or Jessup had that had that nice stop left to Hudson for the first time. They had to punt tonight, and uh, deep into Jessup territory, that ball gets loose. Yeah, uh, Fisher's trying to make a play. Uh, the ball got extended out there from his body. Uh, coughed it up, went right 
lucky bounce for them, went right to, I think it was number 18 for Hudson, and he's able to get inside the five. Those are the things that we need to, you need, sometimes football you need to be, yeah, you gotta be good, but sometimes you gotta be a little lucky, because you gotta make sure that those plays just don't happen. You gotta take care of the ball. So hopefully this second quarter, uh, we can kind of make some changes and hopefully get that positive plays going, see what we can do. There's a return team out again. Cooper Fueling, number 24, Jerry Gerritano's number one, and number 33 out there, Keaton Roscovius, the junior, on that far side, about that, about that 25 yard line. And Appleton set to kick off again for Hudson, going from south to north. Paces off about eight yards, ducks back to his left. And that sidekick, he can get a hold of it. Gonna take a bounce, gonna go, and go out, of, out of, bounds. of bounds. Cooper did a good job staying away from it, it took a about, roll. About six yard line. So we'll take it on the 40. Is that how it go? I can't remember they how that worked. bounced that back. I forget how they changed that. Yeah, they changed. It used to, but I think, did they change now? It takes on the, it goes on the 30. I can't remember exactly. Well, I guess we'll find out right here. 11 seconds to go, first quarter. And they're going to spot that at the, it looks like they're going to go to the 35-yard line. Yeah, 35. I couldn't remember. If that I ball goes out of bounds. You bring yeah. it in there. Yeah. So nice advantage there for Jessa for the return. Hudson four across the front. And coverage on that far side with a number of receivers. And Giratano taken for a deep loss, about six yards. And number 76 got some penetration. Big guy got back there. As soon as Fisher made the handoff, Joe got had, lucky we didn't turn the ball over right there. So that is the end of the first quarter as uh, Hudson with the clear advantage right now, 26 to nothing uh, over Jessup in our first home game and regular season game of the season. Looking back through how Jessup's schedule does line up so far this, uh, this year, uh, obviously home tonight with Hudson. And then we go up to Owen High School, which is about a 20 minute drive from here. Uh, to play O-Line and then uh, continue on the road on the 7th of September against MFL Marmac. Home for a game against BCLUW uh, that's from homecoming. Conrad. Nope. No, that's I not was home. corrected by my daughter that that oh. is not homecoming. That is not homecoming. Yes, I got a text as she was uh, watching our rebroadcast <laughs> on, uh, on Friday. Oh. And she said, shouldn't you share with everybody that that isn't? I was like, yeah, we yeah, will do that. We'll do it Friday. That's what the calendar's for. Just gotta, that's what the, <laughs> yeah, they need to look at the calendar themselves, make them work a little harder. And they'll go over to Eldora on the 21st of September, play South Harden. Uh, North Lynn is homecoming, Jason, so you oh. remember that on the 28th of September, the end of the month. End of the month. Go over to Dyke on the 5th of October. Uh, we bring in ranked Iowa City Regina on the 12th, and then East Marshall is the final game, and that, I think, is maybe our longest drive uh, over in the, in, the, in the Marshall County. I think that's Green. Am I right? No, that's uh, Marshall. Well, East Marshall East, is. I think it is Marshall County. Or is well, it? Well, that would be your East Story? Marshall County. That's uh, It's going to get me here. It'd be Story or no? I don't know. Good question. We got the ball second and about 16. Quick pass, Quick bottled pass, up, intercepted off, again. 18, went off the fingertips, kind of uh, didn't get her feet set on that throw, kind of went off the fingertips. Eric. And number 18 there for Hudson was able to get the ball. Eric Sweeney grabs hold of that uh, player to bring him down. Legrand is where East Marshall is. Uh, East, West, Marshall. So Hudson back on offense. This time they're heading south. Heading south, and they're inside uh, right on the 30, 35. Yeah, we're right on the 35. Drop back pass. Murray oh. finds the receiver, receiver Isaac eight. Rodriguez, 35 yards. Kind of caught the gap right in there and made the pass right in between our Jessup uh, receiver or uh, defensive backs. And he's able to walk in on a little quick little, almost like a quick slant. 
11.47 to go is when that happens here in the second quarter. Rodriguez, 35 yards into that south end zone. And uh, three turnovers have resulted in three Scores. touchdowns. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure all three scores have been off the first play off the turnover. So that's not only is a big momentum that they get the turnover, but they score right in the first play. That's pretty big for them. Extra points, no good. So 32 nothing, and we don't get into a running clock until second half. Uh, but we got to be over 50, over 50 points at that so. point. And then they don't, you know, it just goes continuous clock for both sides. They don't stop the clock. So did get some stats. Brian Van Brocklin uh, working down the sideline. He's got Cole down there helping him, and uh, Eric Cresser. Eric Cresser's down there. Yeah, Eric Cresser, Don Cole. Bubba, Bubba's down there. I Bubba think he's, down just, there. he's just hanging out. He's just I hanging think. out there, being the uh, yep, holding the fort down. So through the first quarter, Hudson had seven first downs, 81 yards on 11 carries. Uh, they were five for eight in passing with uh, 95 total passing yards, uh, looking at about 9.3 yards per play. Two of three on third down conversions. Uh, Jessup on the other side, two turnovers in that first quarter, uh, averaging 2.3 yards per carry with uh, 23 yards and 10 carries. Only four for, uh, they had four first downs there. Yeah. Um, and then you look at some passing yards, uh, you know, 15 yards, uh, you know, total plays. Uh, it looks like 17 plays for 38 yards total compared to Hudson's 19 plays for 176. So, um, some catching up to do. Catching yet. up to do on the scoreboard and on the stat book. Uh, the kids seem still pretty positive. I don't see anybody hanging their heads right now. So hopefully we can. Uh, we need to get some points on the board. Cooper got it at 25. We've had it done a nice job on the kickoff return. We've got a lot of positive yards. We just can't turn it into scores right now. First down and 10 as that ball goes right in the center of the field. Fisher Ort trying to find his block. He gets it, gets some yards, and is taken down just shy of that 30 yard line. And looked to be taken down on the play by Peyton Stewart. Got about four four yards in that play. Brings about, what, second and, you know, five yards, second and five. 11.24 to go till halftime. It's always positive. Well, it's positive when you get any positive yards, but the first down, get the uh, half of your yards you kind of need on the first play is kind of crucial. It helps the momentum. Looks like Hudson's going to bring the blitz from the linebacker. Now he's backing off. Fisher stops back. He's got some time. Finds an opportunity in the hands of Zach Mead. Zach Mead, there's a kid. Uh, hasn't played football I don't, for a while. I don't know, junior high. So steps in as a senior year, comes on the football team, try to help him out. Looks like they'll give him a couple yards, third down and three. He's a big, fast kid. Last year, I'm, well, I know for sure. He, I think he scored the most points for our track team last year. Uh, he had a really nice track season. And hopefully this year in basketball, hopefully, Get some things out of them. Brings up about third and three. And they're going hard they're at that line of scrimmage. scrimmage. The defense roll this side and Fisher, Fisher picks Ort. Up, picks up the first down. Getting close to midfield. Nice to see Fisher Ort back after his knee injury last year and Game two against East Marshall or East uh, Buchanan. Yeah, East Buchanan. Yeah, he fought, he fought hard all year round. Uh, did a lot of rehab. Uh, wanted, he came back, was able to play a full season of baseball, and so he's here right now, uh, help trying to help out the Jayhawks, try to you know be, do some positive things and win a few football games this year. 17 seconds left on that play clock. 10:19 to go. Quick pass near side, and looks like it was caught. Cooper fueling. Cooper got it right on the sideline, maybe for about a yard gain. Yeah, it looks like about a yard gain. 
Dan Fox is a couple, so I'll go. We'll go, we'll go with him with we'll what he Dan. said. We'll go with what Dan said, second and eight. Thanks for joining us tonight. As Jessup looking for another first down opportunity, Fisher Orr remains on his feet. Hang on to that ball, ball. and he'll be down He's just down inside, inside, finally inside Hudson territory tonight. Nice run, we got the first down. Uh, I probably when they're going through game film tonight, or you know tomorrow or Monday, whenever they go through again, or Fisher, they watch it tonight. Nice positive game, but sometimes those coaches are going to tell you you just need to get down, protect that ball, just realize you've got the first down, live for another day. Nice positive play. Low snap, handoff, find the opening, and on the move, there goes Eric Sweeney. Sweeney. There's a big farm kid, number five, he came over last year. He broke, well, last year we had a lot of injuries, and he's one kid too. Got his first game playing, broke his leg on, after he scored a touchdown in a JV game and he was give, basically giving the ball to the referee the play was over with and just kind of got fell on and got his leg broken. 32 to nothing, but Jessup trying to get on the board is there in Hudson territory, first and 10 on the 36. Oh. Ball gets loose and picks it up. Fisher Ort just has nowhere to go but uh, find his way to the ground and just start over. Start over again, fall on, fall on the ball. The ball's on the ground. Don't, sometimes you don't want to try to pick it up when you got the people around you. Force that turnover, just fall on the ball. Still just second down. So it brings up second and about fifth, 14 or so. And gonna roll, roll far side. side. Fisher looking downfield overhead. Overhead. Josh McGill can't get to it. Josh McGill can't get it. He had about a half step on number eight. This has been our best offensive uh, series so far, so hopefully we can, we're about four down territory. You're down 32 nothing right now, so there's not much more you can do. You just gotta keep uh, rolling in fourth down and maybe try to pick it up. Try to put a score in before halftime. Independence up on uh, Olwine. They won tonight, 51-14. They started earlier tonight. Yeah, I saw that they had moved that up because they had the JV game last night. Flag on the play. I would guess, I think maybe our, our offsides. Legal motion. Yeah, that's Jessup. I don't oh. think, if I'm, looks like Dylan Brown wasn't quite set on the far sideline, on the right side next to the referee up there on the line judge. So Hudson has yet to have a penalty against him. Jessup with three turnovers on offense has resulted in touchdowns. And Jessup inching back into their own territory as they're finally getting some snaps in Hudson's side. Low snap. Screen. Fisher gets it in the Eric hands Sweeney. of Sweeney. And Sweeney's going to drive his way back to where we started at first and 10. But they will hold him back to about the 40-yard line. So probably looking at fourth down and 12. Right about, yeah, on the front of the 40. Yeah, let's say fourth and 13. Fisher Ward, Jr., 5'11", 167, drops way back to pass. Got Eric Just Sweeney. finds Sweeney, who... He's doing a nice job catching the ball at the backfield. It's going to be short about six yards. And Dylan Brown got flung, <laughs> flung yeah. over as he was trying to, to catch the block yeah. against Ethan Folker. Folker, a 181, 5'10 on the defensive side. We've seen him in the end zone three times tonight. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Hudson's got some, they've got some offensive players. They've got some athletes on their side of the ball. I think Coach Sauer's calling his first time. I think it's the first time out of the night for anybody. Yeah, I think it's just time to, to get a break and take that opportunity. 
and uh, get a chance. I was just going to comb through and see if we have any other scores. Benton Community and South Tamer tonight, fourth quarter. Benton Community's up 45 nothing. Looks like Wapsie's up 21 nothing, and Clayton Ridge at halftime. Uh, <laughs> the Des Moines Register needs to get up. It's it's they've still got Waterloo Columbus. So uh, <laughs> Columbus Catholic and Iowa Falls Alden scoreless in the second. Uh, Iowa City Regina and Xavier tonight. Xavier uh, 44 to seven. That's a final as I would. As Iowa City Regina goes down. Is Regina, well, they're well, they're in our district, but I think Xavier, they playing 4A this year. I they're, believe they're a 4A school. They're up there. They're up there. Uh, Eddiesville, Blakesburg, uh, up 7-0 the first against East Marshall. Because I believe East, Wa East Waterloo, I think, moved down to 3A from 4A, so okay. I believe Xavier probably would be, I don't know, if they'd be 3A or 4A, I'm not quite sure. They're probably one of those schools they play, fluctuate in between those two classes. Independence, again, getting the victory decisively, 51-14 over big, Allwine tonight. It's a big rival game because I don't – understanding talking to our Independence friends, I don't think Independence and Allwine has played together for – against each other for yeah. quite a long time. And Wilton 12-7 uh, on Durant. Jessup had Durant in the district last year. That's at yeah. halftime. We are in Jessup tonight. Hudson in Jessup. 7.28 to go till halftime. Good gang tackle. And Hudson finding some movement. Still move that pile. He's got about a four-yard gain. Move the pile more a little. Yeah. Got about a four-yard, four or five-yard gain. Move the pile. Holds the jacks on the tackle right there. Play comes in from the sideline. You see the defensive calls from Ron Sadler this year, who's moved up. On the staff. Second down, six. Quick snap, and they're going to run it again. And gonna get them right just finding some holes. holes. It takes them. six, seven, eight G Jayhawk, Jessup yeah. Jayhawks to get that boy down. He made a little cut. We had him stop. I think the original hole that he wanted to go to, and he kind of shifted gears, went to, bounced off a little bit, and was able to pick up the first down. Christian Serres on the carry, gets the first down for the Pirates. Move that ball, move that chain. Jessup territory, it's on the, actually still in Hudson territory in the 44. I thought the power went out. We no, just I had to shut the lights off. I get a little glare, Going it's hard to see. Right. Hudson taken down on the play like with little, Zach Mead. A little uh, jet sweep to number 18. He's quick. Yeah. yeah this is one of those games you just got to keep thinking. It's not district play. It's not district play. Um, and, and it's the first game of the year, and you've got some experience you're working through and some new coaches. And you're playing a team that's, like we said, he, they were in the state finals last year, and that's the only game they lost last year. Folker misses two tackles. I think Can't quite get by the third on the far side with Jace Pilcher, I think, was in there. I think it looks like a little bit of a holding. I think they're going to bring it back. Looks like the guy from Hudson maybe pulled down the jersey of one of our, the defensive end on our side, but we'll see if they bring him back. Flags on the field. Kind of looks like maybe that's what they did. So they're marching back. Hudson is. They know where they're at. So advantage oh. Jessup on that big play. Yeah, blocking the back. I knew it well. Right, when you just see that refer or the line judge throw the flag. Usually, it's one of two things: blocking the back or a holding. Coal Rockling will come out for the Jayhawks, and we'll march back into Hudson territory. They'll spot that at the four. Actually, still Jessup territory at the 48-yard line. Brings up first in about. 14 or so. Murray, the senior quarterback. Little Take counter. Hand off Take right hand there. Saris finds his way up the middle again and still on his feet, feet. but uh, we'll see. They picked up about half what they needed on that play. Fake the uh, jet sweep and the little counter play going left. So 
Second and eight. Yeah, Just got two yards on that. Yeah. And Murray in that backfield. Flanked by Cirrus. And he's going to roll that far there side. We go. Gets hobbled Good. up. Looked like Logan Cole back there. And Isaac Kruger was able to put some pressure on the quarterback. He got basically, well, it's going to be lost in the play. So it's going to be for, we'll get that for a sack. Yeah, Logan Cole right in there too. Oh. It looked like Logan Cole and Isaac Kruger got back there. Brings lose. up third and about almost full 10. Yeah, lose a yard of that play. Uh -huh. There's a kid wearing a very dirty shirt over there on the sideline. I looked through binoculars. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a tiger hawk. That's a tiger hawk. Yeah, I couldn't oh, tell. Tiger, I thought it was yeah. just a mustard stain. Oh, yeah. It's not the beautiful cardinal and gold. No, no. Snap goes back. Make go downfield, oh, and Ooh, Folker overthrow. can't get to it. There was some blown coverage. I don't know who was supposed to be with him, but somebody's going to talk. Number seven was going wide down the field, and that's a throw that – uh, Murray usually will make. We got lucky on that play. Brings up fourth down. That's a throw he want back. He'll go back through the tape and see that and miss the throw. So it looks like maybe they're going to punt. Brady Dahl back to return at the 10-yard line, the sophomore. This is where you, the people up front need to stay home and watch the fake because they're in perfect position to run a fake because they're right on side there inside the 50. Gets the punt off. Doesn't quite get his oh. leg extended. We ran Brady Dahl the, calls it and goes to the 20. But I, we'll see what they call. We ran in the punter. I'm not sure if that was roughing or just running in. So if Flag it's just play. a five-yard penalty, we still get the ball and they just back us up five yards, I believe. So they're actually marching that. Well, they'll. Oh, they're going to re-kick it. Re-kick it. Maybe they give okay. the five yards and make you re-kick. So maybe this is where they would, maybe now go for it. We'll see. He's coming. Uh, he's coming back on the quarterback. Coming back on the field. So this may decide that they are probably going to go for it. Brings up fourth and about. Because if you're running statistically, Jason, yeah. and the success they've had. Moving the ball. Yeah. They're in four. I mean, you're inside. You're right on the 40. And you're up by 32. Two. Yeah. Where was there? I forget where it was. There's some coach they had a thing on there. He never punts. It was some high school coach. And he had, they showed it out there. And he had all the numbers. And even if he's inside his 10 or 20, doesn't matter. He never punts. So I actually, it is an automatic first down. So mark at the 40 yard line. That's almost just like a turnover for them because we had them, they were punting the ball right. and they get the ball first down. Kind of a mental mistake on our end. Timeout is being taken by Hudson and coach Justin Brakey. Get a chance to look at what their schedule is for the season as again, they had uh, quite a run through the playoffs last year and uh, finishing with their only loss in the Uni Dome against West Sioux. Uh, but Next week, they get a chance to, uh, they'll be at Columbus Catholic mm -hmm. in Waterloo, in Waterloo. Uh, for a week two game. And then they'll start district play uh, with GMG Garwin at home, uh, go to North Tama, and then be at home with BCLUW, uh, St. Ansgar. Uh, we will have, uh, have, have see them uh, travel up to Wapsie Valley Fairbank, uh, host Grundy Center and also be at East Buchanan at the last regular season game of the season on October 19th. Probably, I mean, all games are important, but they probably the two games they've really got circled is the last game of the year against East Buchanan, which I think East Buchanan was a playoff team last year. We played them here. Uh, and Wapsie Valley, another playoff winner from last year, it's, you know, has a really strong football tradition. Yeah, that, that East Buchanan team last year. They some were, big boys on that squad. There were some big boys up front and all around. They were probably actually, for size-wise, talking to a lot of people, they were bigger than a lot of some of your uh, bigger 3A, 4A, 2A schools. 4.37 to go until halftime. 
32-0 Jessup. And there again he goes, Christian Saris. Well, Cole was back there again. We just can't get him wrapped up. He's still got about five, six yards in the play with dragging a couple, a handful of our guys. And Coach Sadler's got his hands out for him. You know, you, you've got so many threats. Yeah. And then Hudson, off, Hudson offense. Yeah. Well, you've seen it. They can run the ball. They've thrown the ball well. You look at their stats from last year. The pretty balanced team that, that you know, running and throwing. Uh, they're pretty efficient. Over four minutes, play clock at seven. Sarah's again on the run, zigzags in and out, and goes down. Picks up the first Zach down. Zach Mead with a tackle. Right inside the, right about the 15 or so, right about there. Yeah, I'll move the chains. Move the chains. Not quite first and goal, but they'll be able to pick up first down. You know, ball's right on the 20, I guess. Right, right on the ha almost right on the left hash. Field seems to be holding up pretty well tonight. Still no sign of rain. And they're going to sweep, sweep right side. Again, they've, we've seen this play tonight. And uh, Trey Yochumson, the sophomore, gets some yards. You got We didn't quite get the corner. We didn't give it up, but he's able to make some positive plays for them. Strung it out, that jet sweep coming across. The wide receiver on that left side coming to the right side, coming right at us. Second and third, three and a half to go. Split two to the left, two to the right. And Sarah's in the backfield as we see one in motion, and Sarah's gets... The handoff again and finds the opening for a 13-yard carry. Kind of their bread and butter. They're faking that jet sweep and coming on that counter, coming around the left side. If I had to go back to the tape, I bet you they've scored about three times, at least three times in that same little play. And I, you can tell, I can coach Sauer's expression. He's always a positive guy, but I think you can probably tell that that same play has gotten us. So that's Sears' second touchdown. He had one at the end of the first quarter, a five-yard carry. Now that 13-yard carry, 38 that's, nothing. That's points good. And that will count in as we go 39 to nothing on that, that extra point. Is that their first score of the second quarter, though, or no? That is their second. Second. So score. we had 11:47 uh, to go. Rodriguez had the 35-yard oh. pass yep. from Murray from into Murray. that end zone. So, there's that. Oh. As, uh, as we see Coach Sauer out there at the 50-yard line again with his kick return team. And that's something that uh, we've seen a lot of tonight. And I, while we'll, we'll kick to them a half, or, you know, beginning of the second half, so that will put their powerful offense right back on the field coming right after halftime. Jessup volleyball teams gets their first action tomorrow as they'll travel over to Cascade for a tournament. And then on Tuesday, they'll be at Makokota Valley for a triangular. High they, school track had some experience this past week, and uh, the girls team came in with that first place uh, trophy, and the boys, I think, were third. I saw that. The cross-country team did a really good job. I saw they placed. I thought they were running against some ranked teams, and the girls... Uh, did really well, and the boys did really well for the first meet of the year. And JV football, we'll have Hudson right here. Yep, Monday night. On Monday, and uh, it's the first day for preschool, too. So <laughs> I don't think either of us need to worry about that just I yet. I hope, no. There's probably some parents listening. They're probably scrambling to get their mats. Kicking it deep time. and over the head. And let's it go. Dylan, Dylan Brown, Brown. Let's it go for the touchback, so we'll take it on the 25. Also next week, Cross Country will be at Old Wine. Cross Country also heading over to South Harden on Thursday. And like we've been talking about, this week number two football game, JV Varsity up at Old Wine. Oh, it, oh so Friday night is a JV Varsity? Yep, and JV will have uh, two games this next week. Yeah. Some bumps and bruises. I do see, I saw our new athletic trainer, which we have. She came prepared. It looks like she's wearing chore boots for the rain, so she's keep, making sure it keeps her shoes dry. 
That works. That works. Quick pass. Left side Left in the side hands. Brady Dahl, Brady Dahl fights right his way. Pretty, pretty close to the third. First down. I think, yeah, Brady's yeah, got the first They're going to move it. Move the chains. A little quick pass to Brady. Zeta will get upfield and got about an 11-yard gain to move the chains. There's a kid, the last few years, you just keep seeing him getting better and better and a little bit more confident in himself. And he, he's a sophomore. So you got to take some positive about, you know, some of this stuff. And Brady's one of those kids out there. He's a sophomore playing the varsity level. Coach Schmidt, who's calling our offense, he's actually up in the press box tonight. Matson's down there on headset, getting the communication. And Dahl again gets the call, Brady's ducks in and out. Another Quick sophomore one. passed into Hudson territory. Brady made a nice little move, caught the ball, cut it up high, made, uh, made a move, got another first down. So there's two plays that Brady Dahls uh, contributed to two first downs, two positive plays. Good job, Brady. Looks like he's come in, taking the place of Whites in camp. He's going to see Dahl again, but... Going to find another player instead, and that's Cooper Fueling. Cooper Fueling. Fisher did a good job that time. Sometimes he has a tendency to, to run the ball a little, I don't say a little too much, but right there he did a nice job looking down the field, and Cooper kept going down the field, and we made the connection and got another first down. Spot that on that left hash mark. 2.40 to go until halftime. We'll recount the first half and get some stats and step away from the mics for a short time. And be back on with the second half. And or actually, uh, yeah, or ducks around, can't find a can't find a way to advance that ball on the ground or in the air. Pocket collapse around Fisher. Uh, did a nice job, tucked the ball and took the sack. Uh, but leads a second down. And we're still we're still driving. Hudson calls a timeout. Looks like they weren't quite sure on the defense they wanted, so their coach called a timeout. So they'll make their way over to that sideline, and uh, Coach Sauer and uh, get the trainers out there for some water, or at least the managers anyway. Yeah. And Coach Matson's in that huddle as well with the headset on. Pipeline up to Coach Schmidt, who's Coach the other Stevens, side of their yeah. box, man, or other side of our press box. Yeah, I see Coach Stevens out there. He kind of helped a lot with the quarterback, the offensive side. A pretty positive guy with his kids. It helps him out quite a bit. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technology. I'm Nate Kleber. Jason Pilcher tonight, game number one of the high school season for 2018. Jessup unable to get a victory last year. Looking to try and get one this year. A little more challenging to try and do that tonight. Yeah, you start out the season with a team that, you know, like we, we've said before, they made the state finals last year, the only loss of the year, and they lost to what? Was it West Sioux? West Sioux. West Sioux. Uh, Hay Hayward and West Sioux. Sioux yeah. 35 14 was that yeah. final. So that their only loss of the year was the, they made it all the way to the, the Unidome state finals. Six games, they had shutouts. Um, <laughs> but the most interesting one was. October 6th last year, they were Gladbrook Rhinebeck, final 5 nothing. Yeah, yep. And the Rhinebeck, that is another thing. I don't know, they're playing Bosco tonight. They made the, I don't know, they moved down to eight man. So first night, Fisher Scrambler makes the play, makes the throw, and makes the catch. And falling fall and catch in the hands Cooper fueling. of Fueling. Fisher's doing a nice job this drive instead of sometimes is for trying to make that run, is keeping his feet going and making the pass down the field. This is the deepest I think Jessup's been yeah. in their opponent's territory. I'm not trying to jinx us, but if we can get a score for behalf, this will help these boys come to half feel a little bit better about themselves. A low snap, but a quick oh. pass is caught. Caught. Did he catch it? They have, they Almost give the, looked like he was intercepted. Did, did he incomplete? I think the okay. fine line judge, yep, he yep. he never they never gave a sign. They all kind of one of those things, they all looked at each other and said, what are you gonna call? 
Yeah, he trapped it in there. Cooper yeah. Fueling, as he was diving for it, almost looked like uh, the defense had it. Yeah, so it brings up fourth and about three. So see if we can pick up this first down and keep this drive going. 135 to go until halftime. Nice to get that goose egg off. Brady Dahl. Oh. There's the first Cuts down. Cuts in and out. Cuts in and out. The first Close down. to the 15. Brady Dahl doing some nice job catching that ball. Secured it in after he secures it in. Then he's making that move and going out the field and getting that first down. Looks like he's a little shaken up. Maybe he took a little uh, shot to the groin area, but I think he's, he's, I don't know if he's okay or not. Weizenkamp will come in in exchange. Nope. And actually doesn't time out enough. Back again. Brady will fight through oh. it. Bopped up and not quite in the hands of Joe Giratano. Can't quite get to it. Lucky that ball was going forward and not behind the line of scrimmage. So brings stops the clock and second and ten. And it looks like hopefully he gets Brady off the field so he can get some attention and, and get a breath because it looks like maybe, yeah, looking by his position that he's laying on the ground or sitting down, he needs to breathe deeply for a while. Looking for where her trainer ended up. Yeah. She's over there on the on the sideline, not, yeah. not seeing that. Yeah. Play clock at four. There's the snap. And Fisher Ort rolls out of bounds. And a late hit potentially. I'll check our little in-house replay. Yep, and it uh, would have been a late hit. Yeah, I don't know. Where Ethan he, Folker had a little late hit. He was. They were both out of bounds both at Both out time. of bounds at the time. He, I don't think the Hudson kid was doing it intentionally. He didn't realize where they were at, and he was nothing malicious. He just making the tackle, and you could tell it. They, they just, one of those things maybe. He looked like he, he held back a little yeah. bit on that, but still had the push. Still had the push. Roll right, Roll third right. down and long, and in the hands of. Dylan Brown. Keeps First fighting. Down. Move the chains. About a minute the clock. to play. About a minute to play. Drop the chains. First down and goal. Put it at the. I'm going to mark that at. Uh, About the. That might be at the four, four yard line. I think around the four. So, yeah. See what we can do. Hang on to it, though. Hang on to it. Let's punch this in. Fisher Ort. Gets that at his knees. Heavy coverage fighting through, and they keep trying to push him forward, including Jessup Coach. and Luke Reuter. And Coach Sauer calls the timeout, stops the clock. Might as well at this point. Might as well at this point. You've got uh, one left, and you're second and goal on the four. You always hear announcers or uh, coaches say you can't take the timeouts with you into the halftime, so might as well use them, and this is a perfect time. Uh, get them regrouped, get them focused, give them maybe a couple plays that we're going to go through, and so maybe they can line up and maybe save that last timeout in case we need to call it to try to get one score before half. One thing you can say, even if you go by the score, the crowd's into it. You don't see anybody leave. The student section looks like some of them are dressed Hawaiian style. I guess, something I like guess, that. I guess, I see some kids wearing Hawaiian shirts and some other stuff. So, I see Landon Barrett's bringing the mullet back from I last season. I see that. I think his dad had told him he played better with the mullet, so he might as well start growing it back. <laughs> 46 seconds to go is the timeout for Jessup. Runs down. Brady Dahl. Checks back in. Cooper so, Fueling on the left side, split out. Right side is Dylan Brown. Giratano. Kind of gone to the four or four wide, two wide, two by two on each side. Fisher with a throw. And it's almost get picked broken off. Up. Broken, broken off. Right intended there. for Cooper, Cooper Fueling. Fueling. Kind of went right in the middle of the field. Cooper's kind of covered. Kind of got lucky right there. We didn't get the interception.
Clock at 16 on the play clock. Still holding at 42 till the snap. And Fisher Ortz got a lane, driving on his own and going gonna to be, be short. short. Be right about the one, right at the goal. And I don't know if he's got to come out for a play because his helmet come off or he, or unless, I think Coach Sauer's got to call a timeout because otherwise if the run, if the helmet comes off, the player has to come off unless they call a timeout. So Fisher Ortz <coughs> staying at quarterback at one more chance here. You might as well. It's your chance to get your first touchdown of the night. 35 seconds to go. Yeah. Fourth and goal on that one. So actually it looks like you know, there was some discussion down there between the referee and it looked like Ben Stevens. And I saw the number one go up from the official, and I don't know if that means he's still got to sit out one play, even with the timeout. I don't know. I can't remember exactly how. I know he that still doesn't have that helmet on. He still doesn't have a helmet on, and maybe they do have to come. Maybe he does have to come out for a play. And maybe even the timeout or not. I don't know who he brought in. Yeah. Evil. Fourth down. This is the opportunity. I don't know if Jace is in there, quarterback. I haven't seen the numbers come out, so looks like he is. So yep. that sophomore has, to come in. sophomore has to come in on the fourth and goal and see if we can get some positive play here and try to get a score before half. A couple of sophomores that coach talked about, Jace Pilcher and Brady Dahl yeah. on the field right now. We've seen some success with Brady getting that ball. Now Jace getting his uh, experience for the first time at varsity at that position. And the snap is high, and Gerritano falls on it. So that and will, it doesn't that get to the end zone. So we turn it over. We got inside, right on the, knocked on the door. We just couldn't get it right in. A little high snap, and we had to fall on it. Costly turnovers. Or actually, I wouldn't call that a turnover, but... Uh, Turnover might as well with the way yeah, it was handled. Handled, yeah. Turnover and downs. They've got one timeout left. They're up 39. You don't know if they just run the clock out just to go into halftime up 39 or try to force them to try to get another score. So we'll see what they kind of do. They're going on the eye formation, so I would guess they're probably just going to try to run it out. Now the quarterback right there, he's audible into a different play. Little eye back. Yeah, looks like they're just going to try to run it out. The coach is not calling a timeout, so I think they're probably happy with the score that they got and probably just going to halftime. Don't need to show anything. No. Um, most of these coaches you hear, you'll hear it on Monday when they you know, do the coaches' show on Saturday. They just want to get through these first few weeks or every game without any injuries. And this is one of those situations. Why risk it? Yeah, you never know. No. Just, uh, you know, even just uh, a play that doesn't really mean anything. No, exactly. So, clock will wind down. We will be into halftime. And a score 39 to nothing uh, with uh, Jessup uh, trailing Hudson. Here's how things have gone uh, for Hudson. On offense, it all started 9.51 to go in the first quarter. Hudson, a nine-yard run uh, with uh, Ethan Fulker. Ball was, on uh, the extra point was blocked. 5.36 to go in the first quarter. Hudson getting a run again from Fulker, this time 13 yards in and dropped on that extra point. Murray to Fulker on the pass, 4.49 to go in the first quarter. 52-yard play, extra point does come in, and it's 19 to nothing at that point, and the first quarter ends 26 nothing after uh, Sarah's five-yard run with 11 seconds to go. Uh, the extra point counts as well. Again, 26 nothing. Two touchdowns in that uh, in that second quarter. The first one, 11:47 to go. Uh, Rodriguez gets that pass from Murray, 35 yards. Extra point uh, is uh, no good. 
32-0, and then it's uh, Sarah's with a 13-yard run uh, with 3.24 to go here before halftime, and it's 39 uh, to nothing. But turnovers, that's been a challenge for Jessup. That's been a challenge uh, tackling. Uh, offensively, we haven't looked that bad. We've made some nice drives. We just haven't capitalized and put it in the end zone. We got down there, uh, had a kind of a bad snap, went high. We just had to fall on it. We got down fourth goal. Uh, Fisher had to come out because the helmet came off. So we learned one thing. I guess if you do, helmet does come off. You need to call a timeout. You still have to come out for one play. Just waiting a second as I see our stats are being uh, sent here. Uh, very high tech. Uh, Brian Van Brocklin, they put all the stats on an iPad, and he takes a picture of it with his phone. Yeah. We and he sends it up here to me. Maybe someday we get that Bluetooth <laughs> and we can do a Bluetooth. Man, I don't know. Well, they should be able to. Get live stats to us. Live stats. I don't. Maybe we'll have to work on it. Maybe we'll talk to Eric Kresser about that, see if he can turn on the Bluetooth and he can turn up the phone. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I looked at it last year, and they are like, we don't want to hook this thing at all to a network because they didn't want to disrupt anything in well, there. So. Eric's a pretty high-strung guy, so I don't think we want to do anything. He, no. he takes those stats. He's pretty serious about that. And it actually, I've been down the silence helping him do it. It's actually a little bit more complicated and trying to realize where you got to punch in the things. And he's done it for, he's done it probably now four or five years now. Okay. So he's got it down to a science. We'll step away here very shortly as uh, I'm getting some stats coming in now and uh, get a chance to to see where we're setting up. For Jessup, uh, Eric Sweeney passing actually on the on the run as I'm looking through here, just, just trying to analyze this stuff a little quickly here on the fly. See, I'm going to run down of some of the scores nearby. Sure. Hudson actually, again, right now at halftime, 39 to nothing. Uh, Hudson with nine, nine first downs, uh, 17 rushes for 126 yards, six and nine in passing for 126 yards. Uh, total plays, 26 plays, 252 yards. Impressive in that first half. Uh, no turnovers compared to three for Jessup. Converted that ball two of three times. Um, on the Jessup side of things, two of nine on third down conversions, uh, 42 plays, 162 yards. Uh, overall, uh, you're looking at rushing 16 of, uh, of 45. So uh, a bit challenging out there tonight. And, and looking on Hudson's offense, uh, Ethan Folker, you know, 35 yards, five carries, and they're really spreading it around. Actually, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, on the, on the, uh, on the pass, actually on the receiving, See, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, they're pretty balanced offensively. Uh, they, uh, they're three guys, wide receivers and quarterback and uh, running backs. They all seem to be on the same page. You can tell that they've probably played together quite a few years together, so they seem to be really in, in sync with each other. Jacob McMurray, or Jacob Murray, 6-9, 126 yards passing. Receiving-wise, Folker, two catches, 55 yards. Rodriguez, three catches, 38 yards. Trey Yokumson, one catch for 30 three yards. Uh, Christian Serra's 89 yards on the ground with 11 uh, carries. Uh, tackling wise, Ethan Folker right there, three assists, seven tackles. Uh, Aiden Larson, four tackles, uh, five tackles, four assists. Just upside of thing, Fisher Orr, the quarterback, 14 to 22 for 117 yards. Brady Dahl, three catches, 40 yards. Fueling, four catches, 34 yards. Dylan Brown, two catches, 22 yards. Sweeney, two yard, or two carries, 12 yards. McGill with uh, two carries and uh, five yards, actually two catches and five yards. On the rushing end of things, actually on the receiving end of things, on the rushing end of things, Fisher Ord, he leads things in that stat side. Nine rushes, 48 yards. Eric Sweeney with that one carry for 10 yards. And then Joe Giratano, six rushes, two yards. And uh, leading tackler is uh, Cooper Fueling with assists. He has one, tackles is two. McGill, four assists with one solo. So, um, you know, I guess one thing, you look at the turnovers, and that's going to evolve as the season goes along, Jason. But I, I think what we're going to see here, I'm very optimistic, as we get into week three, four, we're going to maybe see a different Jessup team. We should see another Jessup team, uh, hopefully even next week uh, when we go up to Old Wine. Uh, the offense maybe get a little bit better. And defensively, we need to make some more tackles up front. Fisher's got enough time. We've done a well job. Line's doing a good job holding off. Hudson, they're kind of we're kind of outsized. So hopefully we can uh, they can maybe look at the tape. 
uh, capitalize and maybe make some adjustments and maybe get some points on the board this uh, second half. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Harlan Technology as we wind up the U.S. Cellular Halftime Show. We'll step away from our microphones and I'll return here in just about five minutes. You're listening to Jayhawk Sports Network from Harlan Technology.
This is the Jayhawks Sports Network from Heartland Technology. I'm Nate Claybird, Jason Pilcher joining me up in the Lorian Sabres press box as we close out a halftime here in Jessup tonight is the home opener. Uh, and you can see on your screens, it's been a bit of a challenge tonight. Hudson with a 39 to nothing advantage, uh, six touchdowns through the uh, evening. And it's time to see what Jessup can do. There's been three turnovers that resulted in three touchdowns. And then Jessup had an opportunity, first and goal, actually fourth and goal on the one. And uh, just a, a missed snap or a bobbled snap uh, turned it back over to Hudson to close out the half. Turn over back to Hudson. Uh, they, we did, you know, I know you look in the scoreboard and the stat sheet, it's pretty one-sided. But a lot of the mistakes that we've done tonight are correctable mistakes. I think, like you said earlier before half, or right during halftime, uh, this team should be a lot better come week three, week four. Um, next week, uh, we'll go up to Old Wine. Uh, they'll be looking for their first win. They took a pretty big loss tonight to Independence, so they'll be looking for their first win, as we will probably next week also. And there's the boot. Jessup finally gets a kickoff, and a nice leg from Cole Overbrockling. He's got he extended fast that one, further so than he did in the scrimmage last week, week. and uh, yeah, return Rod yeah, number eight, Isaac Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Fast kid. He got up through the line and got lucky we got a stop on him. Otherwise, if he would have been untouched, pretty fast kid right there. Just underway here in this third quarter. You know, as far as for offensively positive, you know, positives, uh, we had some really nice gains. Uh, Brady Dahl had a pretty nice half there, the, you know, the end of the half. Cooper Feeling did some good things. Eric Sweeney. Uh, Cooper's do, or, uh, Fisher's doing a pretty good job, so we'll hopefully we can get some defense pressure. And Sarah's with the run again for Hudson going north. He's going to get about nine yards on that. They'll move that stick second down. Yeah, if you know, if you go watch the kid run the ball, he's always falling forward, and that's exactly what he's doing. His shoulders and head's going forward. Keeps his feet going. Just keep driving. Yep. Similar to what we saw from uh, Cole Van Brocklin the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you see that, those kids, and they got that forward motion, and they're always falling forward, they're always going to get a positive yards. Second and short. Looks like they made a change at quarterback. They brought number five in for quarterback. Jackson so. Lair, the sophomore. Sophomore. And and I guess why not? And you, we talked about this at the end of the first half. It's yeah. you never know, and especially in the game of football, just one little hit or one little roll on the on the turf of your ankle, and yeah, that's it. That's it. Your ankle, or your knee, or you know, concussion. Something happens with a concussion, and then you got a concussion protocol. And then if they had a couple before, um, it might be a long time before you get on the field. So yeah, they made a change at quarterback. Brought the sophomore in. First down, it's in Jessup territory, that's snap. Again, there's Sarah is in and out, weaving into traffic, and it's Isaac. gonna take uh, Isaac, uh, actually Cooper Fueling, I think, in there as well for that stop. Yeah, it looks like Cooper and uh, Isaac Kruger got yep. on the stop. Move it again for first down. There again, they're getting Getting past the line of scrimmage, uh, he's getting untouched, and he's making the first contact is with the secondary, and that's where, as a defense, that's not where you want the first point of contact. You want the point of contact right at the line of scrimmage or behind it, slow him down. And they'll run it this time, the sophomore QB, Lair, up on his feet, has to get fought back a little bit, but Jessup's defense finally catching up. He did a nice job, he kept his feet going. Uh, looked like he's gonna be short of the first down, but he kept himself uh, going forward, brings up second and about four. Under 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Uh, second and six. Or, uh, well, actually, they got it flipped. It should be about second and four. Yeah. Doug will get that fixed over there. Because yeah. Doug, yeah. See over there moving that, I didn't yeah. even pay attention. Usually he always is. I just always just assume. He's a fixture. Yeah. Ooh. And nice up front coverage in the defense from Jessup. I think he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. So it brings up third and about, again, about, yeah, three. A short gain. Jacob Murray, senior quarterback, started it. Jackson Lair, sophomore quarterback, coming in now, second half. 
39 nothing. If you're wondering when do you start a moving clock, we experienced that uh, unfortunately a few times last season. Got to get past 50. And he's... Keep running it. Keep running it, and he's going to be... Yep, first down. It looks like he just crossed. Yep, they will move the chains and spot that just inside that 20-yard line. Coach Sadler sending in that defensive call after he sees a formation from Hudson. Blair with a snap. It's high enough, and they will find that back. Saris, and he just continues to drive. He just kind of pushed that pile. Kind of uh, about the five-yard line, another first down. Yeah, I see a white and blue, and he just pops right out there, and he got enough for a first down. Put Brent side first and goal. But you got to give these Jessa players, they keep moving, they keep going. You haven't seen any kids on the sidelines or anybody uh, break down or get mad at each other, so everybody's staying positive. So hopefully keep moving forward, uh, get this game done, and regroup for next week. Sarah's again gets the handoff and caught short of the line of scrimmage, but he continues to roll. He might be at the one. Uh, it's Cole, he's putting it up. I think he got in. I think when nope. he, uh, he got spun around. Got crossed the line. Crossed the line. The, usually they kind of wait to the line judge to see what the ball actually is, but he put his arms up in the far sideline, so he must have thought the ball crossed the plane. Sarah's, that'll be his third touchdown of the night. So he hasn't point. gone quite Al Bundy yet, though. No, not yet. What, did, did we decide that was five touchdowns? Four. Four touchdowns. Yeah, four touchdowns. So maybe we can get that patent and make some T-shirts made. And I went Al <laughs> Bundy and see if we can make some money. Well, I wish it was our players that were doing it. Yeah, exactly. Straight on kick. Straight on right through the right middle. Right through the uprights. Count that in there. It is 46 nothing, And we are... About an hour and 41 minutes into this game. And I, you have to thank Justin Brecky, who's the coach at Hudson. He's get one more score and keep things rolling along and try and make it an early night. It's like an early night. I know they've got, you know, it seems like maybe we have some more numbers than they do on their sideline. Uh, but maybe save some kids. They have, you know, you have a JV game coming up Monday night here. Uh, so maybe try to give some of those kids a little bit of experience. So when they come Monday night, they've got a little bit of the jitters out because they've already played a little bit. Uh, same way maybe on our sideline, too. We'll see if some other kids come in um, during this last little bit of uh, third quarter and into the fourth quarter. Dylan Brown races back to that back return spot along with Giratano and over on that far side, you've got Keaton Roscovius. They've done, uh, Coach Sauer switched it up a little bit back there, that deep guy. He's had Cooper Feeling back there. He's had a few other guys back there. So trying to uh, see what he can do to make some changes, see if we get a little bit of a spark. And here's Appleton on that kickoff from that south to north. It'll be high and right in the hands of Brown. He's got a full sprint, cuts in and out of traffic, and he'll dive to the 30. Ball gets loose, but I think a blue jersey has it. Right there. Took the ball right on the helmet, or the ball. Their helmet went out of the ball, popped it out. Um, so we're lucky we got the ball bounced back. Gained a couple yards off of it. Albernet leading Vinton Shellsburg tonight, 49-7 in the fourth. Benton Community, South Tama, they win 45-13 over South Tama. Yeah, a lot of those games, they started a little earlier to try to beat the weather, so they're wrapping it up a little before we will. Second quarter, Cedar Falls up on Ames, 14-0. Fisher Ward still on his feet as he found... Found his way out of that, but uh, there was a Hudson player that had his number. Took the high snap, was able to uh, get the high snap in and made a, 
try to make a positive play instead of taking a 10 yard loss, we only took a two yard loss. Xavier beating Regina tonight, 44-7. Columbus Catholic and Iowa Falls all in still scoreless in the second. Dyke New Hartford and Denver, halftime. Wolverines up 21 0. They're, uh, yeah, they're a uh, district foe, so we'll be seeing uh, Dyke. Fisher's got some time, and the pocket collapses around him, and he gets sacked for a loss. It's a lot of big guys right there up front. Right there. Line didn't held him for a while. There's got to be that internal clock, and sometimes you just got to you got to get rid of it instead of eating the sack. Brennan Siebert has a matchup against him on that yeah. front line. Yeah, he's going up against number 76. That kid in 67 up front for uh, and number 58. Hudson's pretty stout up front. They look like pretty big boys. Eddiesville, Blakesburg, and East Marshall. That Blaker, Blakes, uh, Blakesburg up 7 nothing in the first. If that is still current. Yeah. Fisher's looking and downfield. He'll Makes find a, a receiver. There is a flag. Weizenkamp will get some extra yards. And we'll see what, see what that the, is. See what the flag. Hopefully it's not a pick play. I'm hoping not. Hopefully it's on the defensive side and the play stands. But we'll see what they call. It seemed to it seemed to happen after the catch. catch yeah. Against us. And that hurts. Yeah. Get some momentum and you get peeled back again. We saw that a number of times last season. Yeah. Didn't quite see what it was. I didn't see what he said, but I'm guessing the way he threw the flag, maybe he's calling that pick. Yeah, he was following that. Yeah. And following he that play to Derek. Call, yeah, and he, he threw his flag right away, so he must have saw it saw it and made his uh made the play right away and threw the flag and that but not quite sure on that. Quick pass to Brady Dahl. Got Takes a block. run. He's, he's a good east-west yeah. uh, runner as well. Yeah. Brady's put himself a nice little game tonight, sophomore. Um, Started on the JV and, you know, has made his uh, during practice and, and done some great things. Uh, made it on to the varsity, and you can see why the Coach Sowers moved him up as a sophomore and get him some playing time. He's done some key plays tonight. So brings up fourth and that quick punt again. For sure, it'll hit it high and Takes bounces back, back about the 44-yard line. They are going to be almost right at half, right at right at almost at the 50s. They're right, right at the 44, right about there. So, four minutes to go, third quarter. Hudson has only had one series where they did not get into the end zone when they played tonight. Yeah, they had one punt and that got back because then we roughed the punter so they actually got a turn on and they actually yeah yep yeah it didn't take long for me to get it back to get back yeah quick handoff Cyrus just fighting up against uh, Josh McGill I think is who he was confronted with yeah he's always going forward his shoulder pads are going forward his helmet's going forward and he got a three yard gain we just Long. We're getting beat up front right now. We've got to get some, uh, you'll say it over and over, we just got some penetration up front and not let him get that momentum going, get that speed and get his feet going. Clock's moving, 3.30. Play clock's at 18. Second down, seven yards. And Jessup looking to blitz in, and Saris has that opening as uh, those defenders, those linebackers, were nowhere near where he went. Nope. We went right, we dad the blitz on, and we kind of overshot it, played the gap. We didn't really play the ball there, and they kind of overshot it, and McGill went right past him, and he got a first down. Three minutes, the clock starts. There we go. 
And you see an opportunity. Nice sack in nice the backfield. Sack in the backfield. Uh, a little bit of delayed handoff. Quarterback looked like he was making that read, and we were able to get the penetration back there and get a stop for about a five yard loss. Second down and long for Hudson. Clock's moving at two minutes, five seconds. There we go. And Logan Cole got back there, got the uh, round the uh, tackle. I think we're seeing some change oh. in that backfield. He's able to get past the uh, off the block and make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage again for uh, I think pretty much a no gain. Third down and about 13. They really haven't changed up front though. They've got the same kids playing the line, so they haven't made the change. They made a couple changes in the quarterback and the backfield. And try to make that turn on the far side. Jake Jackson Lair, the quarterback, has to go out of bounds. Look, look. He made some pressure right there. Couldn't quite tell who made the pressure back there. Kind of. So it looks like we're going to force the punt. Since Brady Dahl back. And there's the punt. It gets up high enough, and Brady, gets Brady waves it off. off. It bounces once, and he'll find it. Brings out the offense again. See what we can get a drive going here. But almost 40 seconds left in the third quarter. So, Hudson... Gets stopped for the second time this game. Oh, Brady yeah. Dahl wasn't supposed to be on the field. Looks like he got off just in time. Eric Sweeney's trying to turn the corner. Stiff There's arm a the stiff helm. arm, gets going, and uh, you know Gotta he's got up. some strength he in does. the upper body. He does. He's got some big legs on him. He's a kid. Now he's down on the Around. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Looks like how they're putting his leg up in the Maybe air. Looks cramped like cramped it up. Yeah. Actually, we were looking at a 50, and i got to correct this. It's a 35-point rule. This replaces that 50-point rule for 7th through 12th grade. So anytime you're over 35 points in the second half, that clock is running. Oh. So that's what we're experiencing right now I guess I, as we yeah, end the third quarter. In the third quarter, there we go. I guess we didn't. I didn't even realize that. So learn something new every night. It is an educational experience. It is. When Luke was up here, it was just a different kind of <laughs> educational experience. It was. I don't. I don't know if Luke's at the river or where he's at. I didn't have, Hard I haven't to seen say. Him. Hard to say. His daughter spent the night at my house the other night. And I still have some of her stuff at my house. Sounds right. Sounds about right. So yeah, anytime the score differential reaches 35 points or more, this was. Uh, this was a couple of years ago, actually, uh, beginning with the ensuing kickoff after the first half. Um, there's some changes that went into effect, and that's one of them. The clock will not be stopped unless it goes back over that or less than that 35-point mark. So we're, we're running right now. Yeah, it's probably one of those things, the 35-point to 50-point rule. It's probably... There's probably not too many high school football teams that can put that many points up in that fast to make it. So they're probably doing it as a, say, a mercy rule, but try to speed the game up uh, for that opposing team that's not having such a yeah. swell night. Yeah, they'll they'll pause it here between the third and fourth quarters. Yeah. Uh, if there's an extended injury, yeah. uh, the coaches will discuss it. I think it's it's the option of of the coach that's up yeah. if they want to stop it. Um, anytime the officials feel for safety reasons, they can stop that clock. Yeah. You know, after a score, they'll they will stop and restart it. Or if a kick so kickoff is out of bounds, any timeout charge obviously is going to stop that clock. 
We take it over. So we got it second and about eight. Oop. Hudson, a little hard count right there. 67th across the line, so we'll pick up about five yards. Adam Meyer, the senior, jumps a little bit. They haven't had many penalties tonight for Hudson. It's no. actually, even on our side, I mean, we've had a handful, and they were kind of costly. But for the most part, we haven't had that many penalties. For the first game of the year, on both sides, it's been a pretty well-played game. Referees haven't had to pull their hankies out too many times. Yeah, Jessup's have lost 15 yards on four sacks this game. And they continue to move along, and look at that run. Tanner Cole. Tanner Cole, uh, there's a sophomore getting some action, a running back coming in and made a positive. They got about 12, 15 yards in that play. Um, I know that Coach Sauer had, you know, pointed some of these uh, younger kids. It's not that, you know, the older kids are not doing their job, but there's younger kids that are coming up that put their time in, and it's time for them maybe to get some experience. Obviously, Hudson's had some changes out there with their personnel. Oh. And the ball gets loose. Logan For Logan Cole, Tanner's brother, lucky he was in front of the line, and the Fisher made that pass in front of him instead of behind the line. So try to watch it in because anytime those backward passes, that's a live ball in either way. Just a whole different direction you got to go. Yeah, and it's always, you always teach the kid just jump on the ball in case you don't know. Little snap, Fisher gets it off the ground, little screen. Joe Giartano, got a block. He's gonna turn around the numbers and gets past that first down marker. Joe's Move the chains, about the 44 yard line, they'll spot it. Joe's always been one of those kids for the years. If he can get some open space, he's a fast kid. He started last year in JV, made his way up as a sophomore and kept getting better as the season went along. It was the number uh, starting running back last year. Into Hudson territory. 10.08, running clock here, fourth quarter. Little Little snap. Snaps come in low, and Giratano on the run gets about four or five yards. Some good runs by Joe. Made a couple people miss, and here comes Tanner Cohen to uh, replace Joe. Hustles off the field there. See the play call. Coming from Coach Madsen, as well as Ben Stevens. Offensive coordinator Steve Schmidt up in the press box. Press box calling the plays, yeah. Second and seven. Good snap, flag on the play as we hear the whistle. Legal motion on us, back us up, yep, legal motion. I think on the right side, it looked like the procedure. It looked like maybe we rocked back there on that slot position. That's what, our fourth or fifth flag tonight, penalty? Yeah. Clock Change continues to tick. Change formation. Now we're going to go three wide on our left side and one single back on our wide receiver on the right side. Shaq Med, Zach Mead. Ooh, bobbles up and still hangs on, on to, to it. it. He'll go down. The senior gets the game. As the kids like to call him Shaq Med, and makes a nice catch there. I figured he's one that says every notebook is his. <laughs> yeah. Senior it's year. got my name on got it. Got my name on it. Did a nice job there securing the ball. Picked up some yards. So it brings up about third and about... Four, so we're in a little manageable position. Play clock is off. Actually, in the north end, it's off for whatever reason. And a quick pass. Weitzenkamp gets it with his fingertips. In and out of traffic, down, and the first, first down. down. About the 24-yard line. Fisher did a nice job there getting the ball. Secured it in, make the pass. Nice little finger. Uh, Derek made a nice catch with his fingertips, caught the ball. And first down and moved the chains. 7.40 to go, moving clock. Oh, 
46 to nothing, Hudson. With uh, six touchdowns in that first half. One here in the third quarter in the second half. Penalty again, so I don't know what it was. Blocking the back. And that's just some discipline things they need to work through. Yeah. Probably one of those plays, usually a block on the back when they go back and look at it, it's usually the plays, the, the penalties away from the play anyway. Just one of those mental mistakes. So the clock did get stopped by the officials as they make that adjustment. 22 seconds on the shot clock, or on the play clock. To the near. And there There's is Tanner Logan Cole, Cole. Tanner Cole. Tanner Cole. Got to pick up the first down. Tanner did a nice job going straight ahead. Got that burst of speed and moved the chains. Eric Sweeney will make his way in. First down for the Jayhawks. Looking for that elusive touchdown from tonight. Tanner's one of those other kids, too. They spent a lot of time this past year, last couple of years, in that jack row. They're getting, uh, you can't probably tell, but actually for his size, he's probably one of the strongest kids on the field out there. He's got good hair, too. He does, well. I always notice that. He, sometimes he, he likes to pick his hands through his hair a little few times when he should be paying attention. Fisher Ord fights his way past that line of scrimmage, gets about a five-yard gain. I think uh, Coach Smines and uh, Coach Schmidt last year in basketball had a, said a few things to him about that. Same with his uh, Don, his father, I think made that point to him about putting his fingers through his hair and paying attention. Well, his dad's just jealous. It, well, that's what I said, too. I'm jealous of his hair, too. <laughs> well, you got it, I, ha I suppose. Uh, exactly. I guess, you know, hair's overrated. Under six minutes, clock's moving. Snap. Comes in, chest screen, high, a little lob over little in the hands of Logan Cole. Cole. Keeps running, finds a stiff arm, shoulder down. Picks up the first down, taking on that little penetration. Hudson's a little bit excited. They're still, this, they haven't changed their guys up front, so they must be trying to save their guys uh, for the JV game on Monday to switch them out, or they don't probably have the numbers. Little screen pass, picked up the first down. About five minutes ago, so this would be nice to get a, you know, put a score on, at least get a score, get some more positive going for next week. There's a snap, going to roll the near side. There's a nice block, looking for a receiver, but he finds a hole, but tripped up. up. Tripped up. Just found a little uh, divot of the grass. Yep. So they'll keep it, it second and ten. Yeah, it brings it up second and ten. Swings back in there. He's on the running back on the left side of Fisher. You got three on that far side. In that red zone, trying to find an opportunity, and they find Sweeney. Sweeney. Big boy is going to fight his way, gets swung around to the seven-yard line out of bounds. He's got some muscle on him, and he can fight his way. He does. If he's a kid that can stay healthy all year, uh, get a little bit more experience, um, he'll, he's going to be a, a really major asset to this team coming for this year, and then especially for coming up next year, senior year. First down and eight, chains are down. His first down and goal on the eight. Four minutes, four downs, let's get a score. Rolling all right, Fisher's got a block. And just can't make just that can't turn. turn. We'll get out of bounds, he runs into the official. Well, the official. He bounces him down. Bounces him down. Fisher tried to get out of the way, but just couldn't get quite out of the way enough. So how does that go in the stat book? Does that go as the uh, line think, judge of the tackle? I don't know, maybe an assist. Assist. Here comes Sweeney. Giratano will come out. Eric Sweeney, the junior. We only have, what, a couple, two, three seniors? We don't have. About 10 on there, I think. 10 on there, 10 seniors. Well, yeah. Sweeney almost going to give him a push. He's going to get close. 
Yeah, Dylan Brown, Whites and Camp. Yeah. Uh, I guess I've, sometimes Jayden I Jaden Hansen, Zach Mead, Sam Cooper, yep. Josh McGill, Logan Cole, Tristan Reyes, Brandon Siebert, Lincoln Lukaroth all in there. Yeah, I guess I kind of forget about those kids. Uh, they're a little bit more than I thought. Yeah, I would have thought the same thing until I started counting through them. Yeah. Well, I always thought some of those amount. kids were only juniors, but I guess I'm, I'm wrong again. Fisher, you know, got to tuck, tuck that it ball. In, make the turn, and touchdown. he finds a touchdown. Five-yard pass play in the hands of Dylan Brown. Jessup loses the goose egg. Put six on the board. One of those moral victories. Something to gain on for next next week. Like I said, Owen took a pretty good loss tonight to Independence. Um, tonight we'll uh, take a loss to uh, Hudson. So next week, both our teams will be looking for a first win. Yeah, if you're looking for moral victories, I guess when someone looks up this score, yeah. you don't see the zero, and that counts for something. That counts for something. And look to go for two. Sweeney blocks, find the end zone. Oh, wow. Man. Nice pull in nice grab point. from Keaton, Keaton Ruscovius. Keaton, nice job right there. Went up and got the ball, caught it two hands, and went down the ground, got the two point conversion. 46 to 8. 225 to go here in this ball game. And uh, some nice energy to end the. Yeah, end exactly. The night. Like Coach Sauer says, you know, about energy, if you listen to him, uh, not, the night didn't go as well as we thought, you know. You know, we hopefully it would go, but there's positives on every side. There's little things. Some of the mistakes, if you look at it, could be corrected, hopefully. Uh, look at tape. Uh, I guess I say tape. I guess I'm still old school. Look at iPads. They get everything on the Huddle website. So they can actually tonight, I think a lot of those kids, they'll probably be able to go home tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, look at everything and see all the stats and see all the plays. Well, I would expect they'd pull up this broadcast and watch it. I, you know, heard, wouldn't that be better? I heard that from a couple parents that they go on YouTube, they go home uh, the next day or two, and they actually listen to it, watch the game, listen to the broadcast. So maybe they just go through there to correct, make sure that we said the right names well, and, and then, you know, made sure that we uh, called their kids by the correct name. Or at least, yeah, that, that can happen. Hey, you or Buddy or... 2.25 to go as Jessup will get a kickoff for the second time tonight. Kicked off to start the second. And we're waiting on Hudson to get their return team out. I'm sure they're moving some players around. Yeah, like we said, they're probably trying to get kids that maybe didn't get playing time in to make sure that they know they get some experience and risk getting some of their uh, players. Isaac Rodriguez. Is back deep along with Christian Serres at the 20 yard line. And kick off from that 40 as Cole Oberbrockling. He's not your regular size kicker out there. No. But he can boot it. Yeah. Throw Spins up, lands spins at up. that 30, and Hudson in and out of. The action with Trey Yokumson, the sophomore, gets out of traffic, gets towards that sideline. Defense comes back on the field. Looks like we made some changes. A couple of the sophomores coming in. Uh, Sam Cooper, the senior, looks like he's going to get some playing time here. Those last maybe series or two. We'll stop the clock as a we'll get an offense offense set up for Hudson. Looks like we're a little out of whack out there, and looks like Cole Finley got the stop on the, got behind the line of scrimmage, number 69. Lucky, because I don't think our secondary linebackers are quite on page with each other where they're supposed to be.
Quick hand off the backfield. Jessup has her defenders right there. They're going to see about a four or five yard gain for Hudson. And I believe it was Levi Berdreau, the freshman on that carry. Looks like they're going to be about two yards from the original line of scrimmage. Well, a little bit closer, maybe about a half a yard from the original line of scrimmage. And so yeah, it brings about third and 11. Third down and 11, under a minute to play. Ball. Handoff is, sure, is uh, going to get bobbled, and Jackson Lair, the quarterback, is going to jump on it. Clock still moves. Play clock reset to 25. This probably more than likely should be almost the last play of the game. Right. Fourth and long. I don't know if Hudson would just go ahead and kneel or they're going to actually try to punt it. We got a guy, we got one person deep just in case they do punt. That's seven second difference on the play clock. Hudson's kind of decided seconds. They're shifting players in and out. They're not quite sure probably what they're going to call yet. So they're probably still on the sidelines waiting to. They may just take the penalty. They just may take the penalty. And, and they will. They will. And hit zero. Yeah. And then they'll just. And the night, I'm sure. In uh, not so much dramatic fashion, this will wind up. Here on the Jayhawks Sports Network from Heartland Technology, and that is it. Final score tonight, home opener in Jessup. Didn't go as anybody maybe would have hoped. Hudson maybe wished it was a little... A little longer spread, but uh, as uh, as things close out tonight, uh, Hudson again with a victory, 46 to eight. As we see the uh, blue and orange on the 50-yard line, sportsmanship key in our district and especially in the state of Iowa, it gets courage um, to shake hands midfield with the coaching staff and the players. Uh, but uh, as we close out tonight, you know Hudson. They're an impressive team. They'll have a good season. They're a good, you know, they were a good team. You know, coming in, we saw them on the schedule. You know what they did last year? They returned quite a bit of the key players. They lost a couple, uh, but they returned uh, the quarterback. And you saw what, you know, experienced quarterback and a running back. And they have a pretty big offensive line up front, and they did a really good job. So as uh, Jessup will uh, gather on the field, and I anticipate they'll do the circle like they've done in the past and, and get uh, the crowd involved. Uh, looking at how things uh, go through here, and, and Brian Van Brocklin will send us up some stats here from the sideline in just a moment, but uh, you look how things start off. Hudson uh, with Folker, who had three touchdowns, two of them on the ground, one a nine-yard, one a 13-yard, uh, was at the end of a 52-yard pass play. Uh, that was all in the first quarter. Serres, who had, I think, a number of touchdowns last season. Uh, again, this Hudson squad, uh, runner-up in Class 1A last year. And, uh, you know, losing to, uh, to Wes Sue uh, coming back in this year. Lost some players, but they, they, you know, obviously they're right in there uh, rebuilding because, you know, run, pass, kick, they can all do it. Rodriguez uh, had the first touchdown in the second quarter, 35-yard uh, pass play to him. Uh, Serez, another two touchdowns, one in the second, one in the third, one a 13-yarder, one a five. Uh, and then Jessup, they finally get that score uh, with Ort getting Brown in the end zone. Uh, on a seven-yard pass play, yeah. uh, but turnovers. Turn watch that ball. That, that's exactly right. You know, you hear it, you coach speak, you'll hear it over and in. Blocking, tackling, and turnovers. you got to win those three points, and if you lose those three points, you're pretty much going to be on the other side of the score like we were tonight. But like I said earlier, um, I think some of the mistakes that we did make are correctable. Um, there's a lot of positives. There's, you know, you get – you take the negatives, you try to learn from those, but you learn from the positive, too, and try to gain those. And next week, we go to O-Wine and try to get a win. So you look through here of what, uh, what uh, Hudson has coming up after this victory today. Again, that final score, 46-8. to eight. They will be at O-Wine next week and then at MFL Marmac. No, that's us. Uh, actually, sorry, let's yeah. get there. We're at O-Wine next week yeah. and then travel to MFL oh, Marmac, Marmac. Yeah. and not back home until the 14th of September against BCLUW uh, from Conrad. Uh, we'll see uh, Hudson... Uh, go to uh, Columbus Catholic 
uh, next week, and they'll have their home opener against uh, GMG Garwin. So uh, they open the season, but don't get to be home for, for a couple weeks Yeah, and as you get into that. Yeah, like I said earlier, they've got two probably games uh, circled on their district play. They got Wapsie and they got East Buchanan. So those are probably two games they're, you know, say they're not going to overlook all the other games, but uh, Wapsie and East Buchanan were both uh, playoff teams last year. So uh, should be a pretty good district for them to compete in. Looking at Hudson and the receiving yards, uh, Folker, uh, 55 yards, had two receptions, uh, two touchdowns, his longest one was 47 yards. Isaac Rodriguez, uh, three catches, 38 yards. Jessup offensive things, uh, Josh, actually on the defensive side of things, Josh McGill, uh, two tackles, nine assists. Logan Cole, two tackles, three assists. He had one sack in there. Cole Finley had a sack. Uh, another Cole Finley had two tackles and, and two assists as well. Uh, again, I want to thank Brian Van Brocklin and, and all that crew down there. Uh, you know, you know the guy, those guys pretty well, Jason. They uh, they get pretty serious about this they when they're do. down there doing this. Yep, exactly. I talked to them at halftime a little bit, and you know they 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 do their best to really try to get the exact stats and help make sure the person gets credit for the tackle or you know their yards. That's the other thing too, because you know. It's not everything about numbers, but some of these kids, they really like to see what they did and compare them to, you know, season to season or game to game, see if they get some, you know, more gains. I'm just trying to find, uh, as Brian sent these, he sent like 14 of them. So I'm trying to figure out which, uh, where we're at on some of these things and trying to get some of the final game stats. I think this is what we're looking at. Nope, that's not it. I don't quite have that, but uh, um, we're going to keep working through it. Just like the Jessup team's working through what they're doing yeah, on the exactly. field, we still got to work through what we're doing up here. There's a handful of kids out there that did really, you know, Eric Sweeney had a pretty nice game. Uh, Brady Dahls, a sophomore, came in, did a really nice job. Uh, Fisher did, a, you know, he competed well. He did some good things. Uh, you know, Tanner Cole came in, did some nice runs there at the end. So, uh, like I said, uh, go Jayhawks, and next week's another week, and hopefully we pull out a win. Well, Jace got one play in there, so you got yeah. that uh, yeah. that to talk through, and uh, yeah. my daughter got a little, little varsity cheerleading experience exactly. tonight. So uh, keep it all in the family with, with the celebrations tonight. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Harlan Technologies. As you're watching us uh, live on Facebook or on the Jessup Cable channel number one. Our next Jayhawk Sports Network broadcast will come again, as we talked about, it won't be for a little bit, as it won't be till September the 14th against BCLUW uh, with Jessup High School football right here on, uh, on this field uh, that you're looking at right now. Uh, looks like they're forming the circle here in Jessup to get everybody together. We invite you to continue following us on Facebook and on Twitter at JayhawksSN. Uh, for Jason Pilcher and our entire crew of Anthony Baugh, as uh, well as uh, camera operator Sean Even and stats from all the crew down on the sidelines and Tony Lang, who is our executive producer. I'm Nate Clayberg. Everybody have a great rest of your weekend. If you want to watch the entire game again on replay or other previous Jessup High School athletic events, go to the video section on our Facebook page. Again, final score tonight has Hudson 46, Jessup is 8. This is Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technologies with music courtesy of bensound.com. Go Jayhawks and good night.